Fort Zumwalt East High School. It's high school football on CCIN. Our first visit here as the Lions of Zumwalt East welcome the Timberland Wolves and the Lions trying to nail down a district championship with a victory tonight, at least a district playoff spot. With Demetrius Johnson, I'm Randy Carricker. Great to have you with us for high school football on CCIN. As we get ready to go, Zumwalt East won the toss. They will defer, and Timberland will receive... And DJ, we look at those team comparisons here and look at the rushing yards for Zumwalt East per game. Well, it tells you what they want to try to establish. They want to be able to pound the ball at all costs, and that's what they do. I mean, if they get a running game going, then they can get the flow of the game going. There is Craig Collins. He is the head coach at Timberland, and he's had a great level of success in his ninth year at that school. And there is the head coach at this fifth-year high school, Scott Ekrit here at Zumwalt East has really built the program in a hurry. They're 8-0. and oh, They're angling for their second consecutive playoff spot. They've really done a great job. Back to receive the opening kickoff for the Timberland Wolves is Clayton Raspberry. Our opening kickoff is brought to you by the Carpenters Union. Nailed down a career in carpentry today. And we are underway here at Zumwalt East. And the opening kickoff is grabbed for Timberland and carrying it out across the 35 to the 40-yard line for the Wolves is Ben Steinkamp. Timberland will have Ryan Bainbridge at quarterback today. And as we look at the keys to the game, DJ, let's look at the hot 104.1 key. Well, let's look at Timberland. They need to stop Bird. Bird is a very just explosive player, can make things happen. Ball in control. They got to keep the ball out of the hands. Special teams got to make a play. Zoom on West. They got to set Bird free. Let him get down. And you got to get a fast start. And the defense must stand up in the play, make plays. First down play for the Wolves. Haleem Rayford is the deep back. And to throw, it's Bainbridge. Looking and throwing, and this one is caught by oh. Ben Steinkamp. Steinkamp trying to get away and is finally brought down by Kalan King. But a big play on first down on the first play of the game for Timberland to Ben Steinkamp. Well, I don't know if, if the defender lost the ball in the light, but he was in great position here. Steinkamp makes a nice catch. However, I mean, this could be intercepted. This should have been intercepted. It looks as if the receiver misjudged, the, the defensive back misjudged the ball in the air. Kalen King brought Steinkamp down at the 20. That's where Timberland has it. First and 10. Jaley is the up back. Haleem Rayford is the tailback. And this is Rayford who is torpedoed as sliding in to make that tackle for Zoom Walt East was the safety Christian Brooks. That was a nice play by the safety. He comes up, I mean, he gets the running back before he can even get started. That's what you want to do. You don't want to allow the running back to start running downhill, comes across the line of scrimmage, makes an excellent play. Give you the rest of that Timberland offense. The receivers are Tyler Schumacher and Ben Steinkamp. Sam Bittner is a tight end. Up front, left to right, Luke Desain, Nate Christo, Luke Mueller, Nick Shelton, and Cody Coleman. Second down play for Timberland. Jaylee in motion. And Bainbridge gives to Haleem Rayford up the middle. And Rayford is able to gain a couple on that second down play. And, and I like that the, the, the line of scrimmage is going to be, I mean, every game, any coach would tell you, Randy, the line of scrimmage is where these games are won and lost. And right now, Haleem Rayford is not being able to run downhill. They're doing a very good job. And I'm talking about the Zoom out uh, Lions. They, they're able to come up and penetrate and not allow you know, Rayford to get going downhill. That's a good play. I like what they're doing. Zoom Walt East featuring a four-man front. Bainbridge out of the shotgun is going to throw under pressure and hit. And Bainbridge will go down as he is sacked, making the play for Zoom Walt East was Alex Mischbach, their middle linebacker. Alex Mischbach makes a nice play. However, the quarterback here, come on, big fella, you got to get the ball away. Throw it out of your hand right now. I mean, you, you allow that sack to happen. You got to give credit to the defend, defensive backs. They did a very good job covering downfield, but the quarterback had time to throw the ball away. He did not have to take that sack. You got to get it out of your hand. After the loss of nine, it'll be fourth down. 
for Timberland, and they're going to go for it. Now we're going to get an official stoppage on the field as Timberland will call a timeout. Well, I mean, because that, that, that sack also took you out a, 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 a possible field goal attempt, you know, and in this situation, you don't want to be you know, falling down right now. And I, let me give these kids credit for what they're doing. They're wearing a the pink for bre breast cancer awareness. I mean, I appreciate that. Great job, young men. There you see Zumwalt East in the large school poll, number eight in the coaches poll in the area at 8-0. and And only a fifth-year school. They've really built this program in a hurry. Not only they built the program in a hurry, this is a magnificent facility. I'm telling you, this is state-of-the-art facility here. I mean, the press box is one of the best we've been in. Mm -hmm. And you can look across and, at the stadium and see how beautiful it is. This is, I tell you what, they have taken a lot of pride in making sure that this, these young men and women, student-athletes, have a great experience. Bainbridge for Timberland on 4th and 17. And Bainbridge is going to throw down the middle, and this one is overthrown and incomplete. That was intended for Steinkamp, and once again, King was on the coverage. Yeah, Steinkamp had him beat. I mean, he had a beat just a step away, and the ball just overthrown. Steinkamp can just get a little closer. He may have an opportunity, but I like it, and you couldn't punt the ball and go for it. I mean, he's still in pretty decent position in terms of the defensive stand. For the, for the team, so I, I would have went for it too. Good so job. So now Marvin Bird and the Zumwalt East offense will take the field. Marvin Bird, the third, 5'9", 175. He's a senior. He has passed for 507 yards. He's rushed for 1,351 and has scored 26 touchdowns in the eight games. All wins for Zumwalt East. That is a ton of touchdowns. Let's see what he got, Nick Fell. I'm looking forward to it. Bird to throw on first down, looking and oh, finding his receiver down the right side, Mike yes, Mahoney. Sir. Mahoney yes, inside sir. the 10-yard line is yes, gone sir. for the touchdown. Yes, sir. That's 73 yards. Yes, sir, big fella. That's the way to start the game, big fella. The young fella just stopped back in the pocket and threw it right on the rope down the field. That's big time. I mean, I'm talking about how can he make a play? When would he make a play? The big fella stepped up to the game and made it right off. Boy, I'm telling you, that is tough for Timberland. Big-time players make big-time plays and big-time games. Now Reed Booth will try the extra point after the 73-yard hookup from Bird to Mike Mahoney, his sixth touchdown of the year. The extra point is through and good, and it's 7-0. Yeah, we, we talked about Marvin Bird. Let the bird fly, big fella. The bird is flying high. That's a beautiful pass right here. Drops back in the pocket, and he throws that baby on a rope down the field. That's a great execution. And Mahoney takes that baby to the bank and cashes it in for six points. Whoa. I don't know if Timberland wanted that baby to start that fast, but it started off like that, my friend. 919 remaining in the first quarter, so we are just two minutes and 41 seconds into this one. And one play for Zoom East, oh. and they are on the board. I, you know what? I'm, I'm thinking we got to check our statistician, guys, and find out if that's the fastest touchdown uh, that we've, we, we've covered on this uh, on this program. I can't remember another touchdown that had, what, about 10 seconds? That's pretty fast. If that? Yep. I don't remember another touchdown that we, we have not had a kickoff return in the opening. We have not had a punt return in the opening. Not this year, no. I can't remember over the last 11 years that well, we had to play that I, fast. I remember a game at Kirkwood where the opening kickoff was returned for a touchdown. Okay. But play from scrimmage. This, this is Raspberry from inside his own five. Raspberry, we'll call it from the four. Clayton Raspberry across the 30 and a flag flies as Raspberry is brought down across the 35 yard line. We'll see what the infraction is here. We do not have an official's mic tonight, so DJ and I actually have to pay attention. An illegal block. Well, anytime a, a, uh, a flag come down on a kick, kick return, you know it's normal 99.9%. .9 it is a hold or is an illegal block. So that'll knock Bainbridge and the Timberland offense back 
and they'll start from their own 15 yard line. Let's give you that starting front four for Zoom Walt East. Tanner Trokey and Connor Vortherms are the ends. JT Young and Reed Booth are the tackles. Nishbach, you saw him earlier, is the middle linebacker, flanked by Andrew Hopkins and Landon Reading. Bainbridge is looking to throw and does, and this one is incomplete, intended for the tight end, Sam Bittner. One thing about this Timberland team, they really feel that they can exploit that secondary down the field. If you notice, they come out and they throw the ball deep downfield on several occasions already early in this game. So their philosophy is, okay, we want to try to run, but if we can't run, we can stretch the field. And you can see they are having receivers open. The defensive backs are not really that, that close to those receivers. So I think they may be able to explore that situation later on in this game. That secondary of which DJ speaks, the cornerbacks, Mike Mahoney, who scored the touchdown, and Kalan King. Safeties are Christian Brooks and Barrett Brandon. And now Bainbridge able to avoid a sack, get to the pass away, and this is overthrown, intended for Steinkamp with King on the coverage. We're, we're now understanding what is happening. Timberland is, is seeing exactly what you and I are seeing. If they're playing man to man in the secondary, by the Zoom East team. They're playing man, so they feel our receivers are better than your defensive backs, and they're bigger, we'll get them downfield, and they're trying to throw the ball downfield. And that's because Zoom Walt East has made a commitment to stop the run. And they said, okay, if you beat us, you're gonna be on the pass. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this chess match you know, can continue to develop. Third and 10 from the 15 yard line. And now we'll have illegal motion as Steinkamp and Rayford both started to get up. You had two men in motion, and that'll be illegal motion against Timberland. Yeah, I don't know if Timberland wants this situation to keep going back every time they do something, but that we all be talking about being disciplined and making sure that you, you know, you, you know the snap count and, and, and understand the plays because you're too late in the season to continue to make those kind of mistakes. Third down and 15 for Timberland. This is the second week of district play in Missouri. The final three games are the three that count. And now Bainbridge is under pressure again. He gets this one away. Steinkamp making the grab. Incomplete, incomplete. And it'll be fourth down for Timberland. Well, well that's a nice throw. Beautiful throw to receiving. He just kind of hang on to a big fella. That was a beautiful throw. Great execution, but you just got to finish the play and watch the ball in. Marvin Bird the third will drop back to receive this punt. King also returning for Zoom Walt East. And the punter for Timberland is Josh McDonald. McDonald standing in his own end zone. Snap is good, and McDonald is able to get it away. And this one will fall harmlessly at the 30 across the 40, and finally down at the 42-yard line. Good field position for Zoom Walt East. Coming up next week, we've got a great small school matchup for you as Priory, Priory will take on John Burroughs. You can see it after Big 12 football right here on CCIN. Number seven, Priory, and number three, John Burroughs in a great district matchup in the state of oh, Missouri. That should be fun right there. I mean, John Burroughs has a history of being pretty daggone good as a football team, and the Priory team is pretty good too, so it should be very interesting to see these two teams play. I look forward to seeing that game. Looking forward to that next week here on CCIN from the 42-yard line, Zoom Walt East. They've run one offensive play. It was a 73-yard touchdown pass from Bird to Mahoney. And now Bird, who has run for over 1,300 yards, is going to run it on this play. And Marvin Bird, the third, no. breaks away. And Bird is finally brought down inside oh the 20-yard line. They'll mark Woo. him down at the 12. They said he's big time, my friend. He is big time. I mean, this Marvin Bird is so elusive. The third, I'm gonna call him Marvin Bird the third. I'm not just gonna call him Marvin Bird. I'm gonna call him Marvin Bird the third. When a guy's this good, you gotta use all of his syllables and everything in his name. So <laughs> Marvin Bird the third, he is big time. Look at his ability to escape. I mean, he's strong. He looks small, but he's really strong and able to get through tackles. There's a 30 yard pickup for Bird. Now a first down play from the 12. And he's gonna give to the tailback. And stopped in his tracks for Zoom Walt East is Christian Brooks. Brooks, 1,719, 719 yards 
this season with six touchdowns. So Bird with 1,300 yards and Brooks with 700 have combined for over 2,000 yards rushing. And that's a, that, that's a double threat right there because you can get a ball back to your running back and let him do damage or the quarterback and keeping him. And he can also throw the ball. So I see why he's so special. They've talked about him for a long time and I'm getting an opportunity to see why. From the 11, it's gonna be a pitch left side to King. And King is knocked out of bounds, but not before he picks up five for Zumwalt East and they're on the move. Man, wasn't that, Bert, that, that was smooth. I mean, he ran that Hobson real smoothly, my friend. He did a, a ride with the, with the running back. Takes it out of the running back's belly, comes down the line of scrimmage and do a nice deal kick out to King. Although King got shaken up, but I'm telling you, that was a well executed option. Very nice. Boy, you can see why they ain't no, he, he's a special player. Obviously, with King shaken up, some personnel moves for Zoom Walt East. And King has been a big performer. For Zoom Waltese, 14 catches. Rather, King seven catches for 121 yards and a couple of touchdowns. So, with seven for 121, he's making every reception count. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, that's what you want to do. When you're a good player, you want to make everything count every time you touch your hand. And that's what King has been able to do. Third down play, and this is Bird. Bird trying to get outside, oh, and Bird will get outside, and he will get into the end zone for the touchdown. Oh, A six-yard scamper for Marvin Bird, and Zoom Walt East is on the board again. Hey, hey, let, me, let me just make this. Maybe you could use this analogy, and maybe you can understand this analogy. It's kind of like taking candy from a baby, big fella. That's how Bird just executed that play. He gets the ball on the outside. He bounces it out on the outside and outruns everyone. I mean, he has some electrifying speed, great vision, unbelievable IQ of the football game. Booth great will try the extra point. And this one is up and through and good. It's 14 to nothing. Man, I tell you what, Timberland right now got to be pretty, feeling pretty deflated. I mean, watch Bird ability here. He gets stopped up here. Oh, that's a great block. And look at his speed. They can't catch him, big fella. He's able to turn the corner and just walk in easily. I mean, that's why he's big time. They talked, they raved about this young man. Now we get an opportunity to see him. I am telling you what, he is all, he's worked all the admission that people are paying to come to this game. 14 0 Zoom Walt Easton. We aren't even halfway through the first quarter. Bird to Mahoney for a 73 yard score. And then Zoom Walt East taking advantage of great field position. They started at the 42 yard line of Timberland. And and Bird, the six-yard touchdown run. And I'm going to go back to a punt that uh, Timberland, that punt. The ball could have rolled maybe a few more yards, but the defender for Timberland stopped and caught the ball. The coach always say, let the ball roll until it stopped. That time he did not do that. I don't know if that would have made a difference in how this, this team, this Zoom on East team is executing. I don't know if that had been a factor at all. I mean, you want to not give these guys, this Zoom on East, any opportunities less as possible. Tanner Trokey will kick it away and this is Raspberry. Clayton Raspberry from his own five. This is Raspberry across the 30 yard line. A nice return for Clayton Raspberry and Timberland down 14 nothing wants to get something established offensively here. Well I always talk about in the game and Astrid this is my Astrid series for this Timberland team. I mean, they must maintain the ball, keep possession of the ball, or this baby's going to be over early. We're going to be turning out the lights and blowing out the candles. This is my Astro series right here because I'm telling you what, <laughs> this Zoom on East team has jumped on top of this quick. Greg Collins, the Timberland coach, told us that now Trokey jumps across the line of scrimmage, so it'll be five yards more for Timberland. They'll start with a first and five. Craig Collins talking about how his team has been up and down, and that's what you'd expect when you are four and four. And DJ, they've had so many great players over the years. We remember watching guys like Monty Ball, and we saw Nick Demean, the tackle, and Kurt Cutter, the guard, and James Wofford, who's now playing uh, at Lindenwood, a very good return man. And you just can't count on having great players year after year after year. So they've got some tough shoes to fill here at Timberland. No doubt about it. But I mean, that's what coaching 
is for. It's developing the young skill and get them up to the par, the level that you want them to play at. Bainbridge, the quarterback, on first and five. We'll give to Rayford, and Rayford is stopped for a loss. That defensive line and linebacking core, Andrew Hopkins of Zoom Walt East in to make the tackle on Halim Rayford, who's 5'11 and 232. Well, Coach Collins got to make his mind up from, from Timberland. If they're going to stop the run, I'm going to tell you they're doing man-to-man -man on the outside at Zoom Walt East. So if I'm Timberland, I'm going to exploit that middle of the field. The middle of the field is wide open. You got both of your corners man-to-man. Uh, -man. Now your safety is right there. I'm going to use the middle of the field. That's what I'm going to do. This is Rayford again. Rayford tries to turn the corner and he can't. Once again, that middle linebacker is there. The defensive tackle, JT Young, along with the Nishbach, sliding in to make the tackle. Watch it, that's nice. Buskin makes a nice play, man. Number 58, the linebacker, he comes up in my 59, makes a nice play. And I'm going to tell you, T, uh, JT Young makes a nice play. That, that's teamwork. I mean, you're coming up together and you're making plays. That's how you stop the run. The linebacker does his, does his business, and the defensive line was doing his business. That's what I like. Bainbridge, the sophomore quarterback, is going to throw under pressure now. Gets away from the sack and throws and caught. And racing is Tyler Schumacher for a touchdown for Timberland. Man, you're talking about <laughs> something that the docs needed. That is exactly what Timberland needs. The, the middle of the field is open all day. You're going to try me man to man. What I'm going to do, I'm going to exploit the middle of the field. That's exactly what Timberland just did. They explored the middle of the field. It's wide open. Continue to attack the middle of the field if they go to stand a man to man. Now the extra point try for Travis Arndt to the 66 yard pass play. And now Arndt with the extra point. 66 yards from Bainbridge to Schumacher. Schumacher's third touchdown of the year, and it's a 14-7 game. And that was a nice pass, but you got to give the quarterback credit here. And look how he buys time. I mean, look at it. He eludes a, a, a rusher and throw that baby right on in the money. You take it to the house for six points. That's how you got to do it. Schumacher takes that baby in. It's great, great play. And I'm telling you, that was an accurate play because if they get out at 3-0, right here if they don't make this play i'm telling you what this game would have been over but i like how timberland fall back in it make a play schumacher take it in great job and dj you talk about coaching a team up and that's one of the things that craig collins is dealing with he, he's got a sophomore quarterback schumacher who just scored that touchdown is a junior he's got a junior flanker on the other side in stein camp the running back rayford is a senior uh they've got a uh, reasonably veteran offensive line, but when your skill guys are underclassmen like they are for Timberland, that's why you can expect some roller coaster rides. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's all, every game is a, a learning experience for young, talented players. I mean, that's going to happen. You got to gotta fight through it, keep working your way through it, and then, you know, good things can happen. They got they build it for the future. Although they want to win, Timberland wants to win, but they also build it for the future. Timberland across the line of scrimmage before the ball was kicked, so they will be moved back five yards for this kick, and Bird actually got his hands on that kick, and that's one thing that you don't want if you're Timberland is for Bird, who is explosive to get his hands on the kickoff. Bird and King are the kickoff returners. Number 21, Bird, number one, King. Yeah, well, they talked about Bird, and, and you know, I mean, he's got a lot of buildup as being this explosive player. Never had an opportunity to see him play. This has been fun to see a young man living up to his expectation, and he's living up to it. Now a high kick, and it'll be Bird from his own 25-yard line. Bird will hand to King, and King is brought down, and a flag flies. Nice special teams play there for Timberland. Is racing down to make the play was Dane Willman, and we'll see what the call is going to be here. Did you see an illegal block? I didn't, if, if there was one, I didn't see it. But there was one against Zumwalt East, and that'll move them back from the 25. Like I said, one thing you know, if there's a flag on the kickoff, you know it's going to be probably uh, holding or uh, blocking in the back. Two seconds away from the midpoint 
of the first quarter. It's already a 14-7 game. A pretty explosive start to this one. It really is. I mean, whoa. I mean, it's early, too. If this is any indication of what we got to look forward to, it's going to be a whole lot of points on the, on the scoreboard. There's Dane Wilman, who made the great special teams play. And in addition to Wilman's play, you've got the penalty that sets Zumwalt East back even a little bit more. Bird is the quarterback, Marvin Bird the third. He's going to throw left side. This one is caught by King. And Kalan King down the left sideline is finally knocked out of bounds, but not before he picks up a Zumwalt's first down. I really do like Kalan King, man. I, I like his ability to escape. They got some really nice athletes on this uh, Zumwalt East team. And, and watch it, boy. That's a nice move. Now he's blocking down, feel excellent. Boy, he almost took that baby to the house. That is good execution by Zumwalt East. Cody Ayers, the linebacker, knocked him out of bounds. And the ball is marked at the 31 yard line. It'll be first down for Zumwalt East. Bird right up the middle. Marvin Bird the third is slammed down. But a nice pickup for Bird. Making the tackle was the defensive end, Kevin Kirkpatrick. Anytime you let Bird get about four or five yards, that's a victory for yourself. I mean, this young man, I mean, he's clicking off and knocking off over 20 yards in this game easily every time he touches it. This kid is so explosive, but he understands the game. That's what I like about him. Now Bird is going to throw. This is Mahoney again. And Mahoney fumbles, and Zumwalt East is able to fall on top of it. An alert play as Mahoney was trying to get away. And falling on top of it for Zumwalt East was Tyler Ham. The only way that play is going to be successful, the receiver, when you're in a, in a split or slot set, the, the receiver who's not receiving the ball must block. If you don't block that, the defensive back coming up is never going to work. Third and ten. Brooks in the backfield with Marvin Bird the third. And Bird will carry it himself. And boy, does he have a little burst as he crosses the 40 yard line out to the 41 and close to a first down. Not quite there. This will be an interesting yeah. call. You know, I'll be surprised if they, if they punt this. I really, I mean, Bird is that good that I mean, he could pick up one yard for you. And they're going to go for it on fourth and one. Bird does take it himself and surges for the first down. The ball is loose, and he has the first down. He was down, and now Bird will get everybody aligned. And with the first down, Zumwalt East stays on the move. Yeah, I mean, that was an easy call to me. I mean, you have not been able to stop Bird, so why not? It's a, it's a one yard. He could pick up one yard just by his athletic ability alone. I mean, that's going to give you three yards. So, I mean, that was an easy call for me to see him get that. First down play. Brooks is brought down. Kirkpatrick, along with Clay Steinbecker, the other defensive end, converged, and they met at Christian Brooks. That's a good play by Kirkpatrick. That's what you need to do, come up and penetrate. And Steinbecker comes up, too, and make the play with him. I mean, that's what you need. You need one, two, pow. Look at that, pow, pow. That's what you need. You need two he helmets on the ball all the time. That's team defense. Second down, bird to throw. Looking left and oh, catching man. the ball is a tight end. Oh. Nice grab by Zach Bumstead for a first oh. down for Zoom Waltese. Big fella, I'm impressed with the young fella. I am impressed with this kid. I mean, he threw that baby very effortlessly. Look at that, Randy. Right there. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Right in stride. The receiver never had to break stride at all. That's impressive, big fella. That's big time impressive. Elliot Brown brought Bumstead down. Bird is going to throw again to the right side. And this one is almost intercepted by Raspberry and dropped. Boy, Bird, you got away with that one, big fella. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. And, and this is interesting. I want to see, this is my theory on being able to make plays. When you get an opportunity to make a stop, you got to make the stop. Now, don't be surprised. It happens more than not that now this series, this team may go down and score a touchdown because you didn't take advantage of that, that, that play that you should have intercepted. 
So don't be surprised if they score something out of this. And that's hey, that's uh, Zoom already stuff speaking of. The ball rests at the 35 yard line of Timberland. Bird to throw again, and this time he goes to the left side. This is caught by King. King spins for the first down for Zoom Walt East, and they just keep the ball on the move. Well, every time I, I've been watching Bird mechanics, Randy, he's throwing this with all on. He's not even stepping into it, big fella. I mean, he's just flat footed and throwing that baby with all on. So he must be very strong up, up, up top to be able to do that. From the 21-yard line, Zoom Walt East trying to expand their lead back to two touchdowns. This will be Bird. Bird cuts it inside. Now he gets to the sideline and into the end zone for the touchdown. We talked about his burst, and he burst for 21 and a score. My goodness, somebody. I mean, this guy is just unbelievable. I mean, he can throw the ball. He can run the ball. What else can he not do? Maybe selling popcorn at halftime. Do they have a marching band out there marching with the band? I mean, this guy does it all. I mean, he is big time. If you never had an opportunity to see Marvin Bird, the third play, this is a great opportunity because he is showcasing his talents to the whole Metro Metro East area. Pass for a touchdown. He's run for two now. Booth in the first quarter trying for his third extra point. And Booth is able to get it through there and expand the lead to 21 to 7. Well, I'm telling you, Bird's ability to understand the game. That was a fake draw. I mean, it was a, just a draw. Fake quarterback pass. He's going to take it. Man, he did not get touched. They got to do if, if I'm if, if I'm Timberland, I'm going to put a spy on it. You got to put somebody just responsible for Marvin Bird the third. Bird the third. That's been pretty good. It is. Yes. Good crowd on hand here at Zoom Walt East. And they lead by a score of 21 to 7. Raspberry will go back to receive this kickoff, and things have happened in a hurry. I mean, it really has because just think if you take away that seven point, man. Well, I'm telling you, it's it's unbelievable. I mean it's this team is on all cylinders, my friend. No doubt. When you look at this, this Zoom on East team, they're clicking on all cylinders. If I see a weakness right now in the Zoom on team, I would say the kickoff coverage. Kickoff coverage, I've not been as impressed with it as I would like to be. Trokey kicks it along the ground here. And finally, oh, they oh, lose man. the football. Timberland fell on oh, it, lost man. it. Now let's see who came up with it. Zoom Walt East has the football Whoa. at the 31 yard line. Oh. Trying to jump on top of it for Timberland was Austin Grubbs. He wasn't able to get the handle. And Zoom Walt East gets the football back at the 32. Well, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to blame uh, these, the, the young man who didn't get it, Grubbs, because he's not, he's probably not on a hands team. And they, they didn't think that it was going to scrib kick it like that. What happened, I mean, you got to be alert. Got to be ready. Special teams, a vital part of a football program. Bird and the Lions starting from the 32-yard line. DJ Reeves checks in. Bird to throw. Gets it away down the left sideline, and this one is intercepted. Picked off for Timberland, and they get the football right back. That's a great position right there. Elliot Brown makes, pick. makes a nice play. Elliot Brown, number 21, he stays at home. He didn't go for the fake. He stays with his man. You see, they, they had a man in the short flat, and they had the receiver going on out. Elliot stays at home and makes a nice interception. That's very disciplined by Elliot Brown. Timberland will start from their own five-yard line with 234 remaining in the first quarter. Let's see if they go with Rayford here. I'm going to go with the fullback instead, Jaley up the middle. And Nick Jaley is able to fall ahead for a small gain for Timberland. Well, if Timberland, if Coach Collins, I, and I, he's got to feel it. No, he's got to be willing to go all out. That middle of the field by Zuma East is so wide open. I'm going to continue to explore and throw down the middle of the field. If that means use my tight end, I'm going to use that. But I'm going to continue to attack that middle of the field. 
if I'm if I'm Timberland. Jaylee did not pick up any ground on that first down carry, so it's second down and ten. Steinkamp in motion. And we're going to have a flag here as the referee calls an illegal shift on the part of Timberland. Or not, was that too much time? I think it was a illegal. I think it was a legal shift. But not, now the play calling right here, you still got you still got to play aggressive in here. I, I'm not just going to continue to run it. I am going to try to throw that ball down the middle of that field. Steinkamp goes back in motion. Still second down for Timberland. This is Rayford. And Rayford pulls across the five out to the six or seven yard line. Not much there for Halim Rayford on that second down play. Well, the D line and linebackers are playing great for, for East. I mean, they are coming up and they're making plays. So it's going to be very difficult unless you get a helmet on a helmet and be able to seal block from that offensive line position. If you can't seal block and get a helmet on a helmet, Rayford is going to continue to have these kind of problems running the ball. Bainbridge to throw under pressure. Trokey after him. Bainbridge gets it away out of bounds and incomplete. And he was almost sacked for the safety. Trokey was after him, and Bainbridge alertly got it away. That's outstanding pressure by East. They come up, and they really put a pressure on the quarterback. Now allowing the quarterback to send the pocket with any comfort. They're making Bainbridge work back there in the pocket. I'm telling you, quarterbacks don't like to work like that. They wish they can get back there, have a nice little comfort zone, be able to, to make their reads and throw the ball. However, this East team, the Zoom on East team, is not allowing the, the, the Timberland team to do that. Josh McDonald from his own end zone looks back at the end line as he'll kick it to Bird and King. Good snap. McDonald gets a high kick away, but very short. And this one is going to fall at the 27 yard line. And once again, great field position for Zoom Waldees to start a drive. I mean, great field position. They're going to mark this one inside the 25, actually. Whoa. This is outstanding field position, my friend. And, and with the explosiveness of uh, Marvin Bird, I mean, I mean they, they can score quick on you. Ball's marked at the 23. Bird carries it himself. And Bird takes it inside the 20. He's so patient. He, he's one of those players you can tell right off the bat that he just has great vision and is looking for the hole all the time. Uh, you're right. I mean, he lets things develop. Uh, and, and the game slows down in his mind. That's what great players do. They can slow that game down in their mind like he's able to do. And that's how he's able to react so fast because when you're that fast, that quarterback is a uh, football player. You let things develop real slow in your mind and you can see the, the, the game at a slow pace. Closing in on the end of the first quarter Bird and this is Brooks getting outside and Christian Brooks is brought down inside the 10 yard line and that will do it for the first quarter. A great start for Zoom Walt East as Bird hit Mahoney for this 73 yard strike. That was just the start of things. Three touchdowns for Zoom Walt East. They look to go to 9 0 and lead 21 7 after one. High School Sports on CCIN, brought to you by the Carpenters Union. Nailed on a career in carpentry today. The Missouri Military Academy, structure for learning, leadership for life. And by STLHighSchoolSports.com, powered by Charter. 
Hi, I'm Andy Bennett. You now have more than one choice when it comes to choosing union electrical contractors. Associated Electrical Contractors, AEC of St. Louis, and Local 57, affiliated with the Carpenters Union, have highly trained electricians who are safe, productive, and ready for any electrical project. Local 57 members go through more than five years of hands-on training at Rankin Technical College. For a list of electrical contractors, call the AEC at 314-644-7228. Make the switch today. When you text, you save. Text SAVE to 94594 and get discounts and offers from area businesses. Text to save on things like fast food, pizza, concert tickets, car washes, haircuts, sporting events, and more. Now you can text to save by getting special deals on the things you want. It's easy and convenient. Just text SAVE to 94594 to sign up for future offers. Then get the deals sent straight to your cell phone. Just show the text message in the store or restaurant and save money on the spot. You text to save. It's about finding a job you love. It's about real jobs from real companies, real close to home, right here in St. Louis. It's about more than a classified ad. It's seeing and learning about companies before you apply. It's about your career and trusting a job website that takes local jobs seriously. Fresh jobs, real jobs, local jobs. It's about time you found the St. Louis job you love. Employers post your open positions on jobbing.com today. Mom? She's on the phone. She's on the phone. Hi. So I have some news. I, I wanted to call you first. We found out what we're going to have today. We're having a boy. I know, I know. Let it all in with Charter Phone and get unlimited nationwide calling. Full moon here at Zoom Waltees. It's pretty much a full moon anywhere in America. But here's Zoom Waltees. We've got it on camera for you. Demetrius Johnson, Randy Carricker, good to have you with us for high school football on CCIN. The Wolves are out as we approach Halloween, and the Wolves are trailing 21 to 7. And Zoom Waltees threatening to score again on the first play of the second quarter. Marvin Bird, the third. This is Bird, and Bird is brought down as. The linebacker, Jaley, came in and wrapped him up and brought him down. Well, that's the only way you're going to be able to stop Marvin Bird, the third. You're going to have to penetrate, and you're going to have to make him work. I mean, right now, he's not working, big fella. I mean, he, this has been so easy for him. He's made plays, and I mean, he's doing everything he wants to do. And most importantly, he is having a lot of fun doing it. On second down, Bird and Brooks in the backfield. Bird again. Bird finds Whoa. a hole and is brought down inside the five yard line. And Zoom Walt East on the move again. Man, did you see the ability of Marvin Bird the third to get through that hole? I, I mean, I didn't even think he had nowhere to go. He was able to create an opportunity. I mean, watch the seam. Watch how small the seam is right here. And look how he gets through there. I mean, I mean, whoa. I mean, that's just understanding the game. Now, uh, third down play and they're in for the touchdown. Bird with another score for Zumwalt East. It's 27 to 7. I am telling you, this young man is pretty good. No, he's exceptional. And what I like about this is, you know, he's he's 5'9, Randy. And a lot of times they want to talk about height, size, and all that. Man, in football, it comes down that, that you want to play and that you have the heart to play. Another extra point, and this one is through. through. It's 28 to 7. Uh, and I'm telling you what, this game, I mean, they're going to have to do something to get this game under control because uh, Marvin Bird has been a one man wrecking crew. And I'm going to give credit to the offensive line. The offensive line is doing a great job blocking. In order for Marvin Bird, I don't care how great of an athlete you are, you got to have that offensive line up there blocking for you. And that offensive line for Zumont East has done a marvelous job blocking up front for Marvin Bird. DJ, this the third. program here at Zumont East off to such a great start. 
put yourself in your coaching shoes. Would you rather take over a brand new program with no history or a program like Nick Giannino took over at Fox or like uh, at Normandy for so many years with a bad history? No, you're asking me. Yeah. Okay. But I'm at least a, you have a history. Let me say, I got an ego. Mm -hmm. So I want to create my own. I want to be to leave a legacy. I want to say, okay, we started this thing, win or lose, we're going to build it to a, a formidable, respectful, and then maybe a powerhouse program. And that's what has happened in a short period of time. For this Zoom on each team to be 8-0, man, that's unheard of in five years, Randy. That's really unheard of. Trokey's kick will go into the end zone, and Timberland will start from their own 20. Craig Collins has done the same thing, by the way, at Timberland, their school, only nine years old. So these two programs, both starting from ground zero, have really made great strides. And every time you do something, it's history. I mean, that's the beauty of what, 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 what you do when you're starting something new. You're always creating history every time you do something on the field. So I'm telling you, I would love to have a program to build with nothing. And then you know what? If you want to see how to measure what kind of coach you can be or what you are, take a program from scratch and let's see how you can make it. This is Haleem Rayford. And Rayford is brought down. Nice tackle there for Zumwalt East. Brooks knifing in to get him. And, and let me tell you what that was a big play by Christian Brooks, number two. He comes up, he had a guy blocking him, and a defender blocking him, he blocks off of it, look at that, bam, and just dives under and cut Rayford's legs off from under him. That was an excellent play, coming up and making a play by Christian Brooks. Rayford again, and this time Rayford is hit and finishing off the tackle there for Zumwalt East was the outside linebacker Andrew Hopkins, the junior, 6'1", 160. When you're going up against a 232-pound Rayford, that's quite a tackle to make. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, that was a collision, that big fella. I mean, they came and power one another. But, um, but I'm going to tell you, this is Timberland. I mean, with the Monty Ball. Monty Ball was a great running back for Timberland. They give him the ball all the time. So their philosophy is to pound the ball at you. Bainbridge to throw. Incomplete. Not only ball, but Nick Demean, who was one of your All-American top 25 players last year. Yes. Who's at the University of Missouri now. Kurt Cutter, who was the left guard along with Demean. He's playing as a redshirt freshman now at Missouri State. They really have a great early history at Timberland. I mean, you're right. I mean, and that's developing. I mean, that's a coach taking, you know, uncharted talent and developing them to be outstanding players. So that's good coaching by Coach Collins. Josh McDonald will kick it away to Bird or King. McDonald under pressure gets this one away. And King makes the fair catch at the 46 yard line. Hey, if you want to know when the best high school games are airing on CCIN, it's easy to find out. Text GAME, G-A-M-E, to 94594 and be automatically signed up to receive mobile texts with matchups and air times. Once again, text GAME to 94594. It's that easy to get all the information about when we are airing games here on CCIN. And you know what? Sometimes when I want to watch the games, I just go and text it and find out what's going down. Because I want to watch our game again, my man. Bird and the Lions from the 46. Here's Bird up the middle, and Bird is brought down after a gain of five for Zumwalt East. They pick up yards every single play. They pick up a chunk of yardage. That, that, that's true. And so it takes a lot of pressure off. When you on your first down, you can pick up five yards on first down. I mean, make your other two downs very easy to call plays because now it's not a lot of stress on you, very manageable. I mean, I you, it's difficult. They, the Timberlands got to make a big stop on first down. The other thing they have to do is hang on to the ball offensively. King has to go off his hands, incomplete, they, because you just have to keep the ball out of Zumwalt East's hands offensively at some point, and I know that's what Craig Collins is trying to do there on that last possession. Craig Collins and the Timberland staff get the ball into the hands of Rayford and try to put together a long drive that will com consume some time and keep your defense off the field. Well, you have to because this 
this is what these team has been scoring fast. They're trying to get the ball, they can score fast. So you gotta, how you slow them down, you gotta, you know, maintain the ball. Bird to throw, and this is King. And King has a first down for Zoom Waltese. Nice grab there for Kalan King, and the tackle made by Miller. I really like King, Kalan King. I mean, I really like what he's doing. I mean, he catch that ball in traffic. He's covering it up. I, I like his ability to make plays. He, he is a nice player. That was Malinsky on the tackle for Timberland. Chase Malinsky into the game at safety. Now Bird looks to throw again under pressure. Gets it away incomplete. That was intended for Christian Brooks. And a good job by Bird to get rid of that one. Oh, that was a lot of good pressure on Bird that time. And that's what you got to do. You can't allow Marvin Bird the third to just sit back there in the pocket and be real comfortable. You got to put pressure on him. Make him make a quick decision. If you don't, I mean, he will eat you alive. So you got to make him do some things that he don't want to do. On second down and 10. Zoom Waltese, they've thrown a little bit more than I thought they would, DJ. Yeah, I, I'm surprised too, but I mean, you can see they got the receivers. King is matched up and he's able to beat his player, his man all the time, so I can see that. Bird to the tight end this time, and this one's incomplete, intended for Zach Bumstead, the 6'5", 185-pound senior tight end. Well, that was pressure coming up in the middle of Bird that time. It didn't allow him just to be as comfortable throwing the ball. That's what you must do. You got to put pressure on Bird up front. Now, this is a big play right here because if they're able to get five or six yards on this play, they're going to go for it on fourth down. So this is very important, important for this uh, Timberland team to make a stop. Bird is going to run, and he is grabbed and brought down. Great job by the defensive end. That was the tackle that came up to make the play and get a hold of the ankles of Bird. Roberts was able to finish off the tackle. Well, I tell you what, this team, this Zoom on East team, have no fear. And they feel that they can beat this Timberland team and they, they can't compete to them, compete with them. So they're going to go for it on fourth and 11. That's when you know you got confidence in your team when you're on your own 31 yard line and you're going for it on fourth and 11. Marvin Bird, the third to throw. He does. And this one is incomplete. Incomplete intended for King. But the ball hit the ground, and it'll be Timberland football. Yeah, and that's the stop that Timberland need. They needed to make a stop. That's the first stop they made in this game, and I know they felt pretty good about it. Now, offensively, they got to get the ball and make something happen. They, they, that's a nice stop. That's what they wanted. They wanted to get the stop. They finally got a stop. Now can they cash in on the stop? Bainbridge and Timberland from their 30-yard line. Bainbridge to throw. He does, and this one is caught. And making the grab near midfield is Sam Bittner, the tight end, the 6'3", 215-pounder. His first catch of the night, and a first down for Timberland. Beautiful play-action pass. That's what you want to do. Watch the play-action pass here. Great. And then you drive your tight end across Sam Bittner, Bittner, and look at him. Makes a nice catch and go upfield. That's great execution by Timberland. That middle of the field is, is open. I'm going to continue to attack the middle of the field. Now it's going to be Halim Rayford. And Rayford puts his head down and pulls ahead for a gain of four for Timberland. That's one. Of that's what I call that. That kind of run, I call it. That's a warning it run. Meaning he wanted to make something happen. He wanted to be positive on that run. I mean, look at him. He gets hit on the draw on the back. Pow, look at that right here. Get hit again. Pow, pow, pow. And, uh, still with pow, pow, pow. Woo -hoo -hoo. And he's still moving. I mean, that's wanting to make it happen, big fella. I like that. That's a good run by the big fella. And who's there to finish off the tackle but Bird. Second down play. And the... Fullback, Jaley, carries it to the 45-yard line of Zumwalt East. Zumwalt East defensive line that time comes up and makes a nice play. If you want to stop a run, that D line's got to be stout and they got to play physical up front. 
they must allow the linebackers the freedom. If the linebackers are tying up the defensive line, if the defensive line is tying up the offensive line, the linebackers are able to make tackles. Timberland, Bainbridge, the quarterback throws, and Bittner can't hang on. He was covered by Brooks, and he couldn't hang on to that pass from Bainbridge. Boy, that's a beautiful play by Brooks, number two. I mean, great play, action plans, but you drag them all the way the opposite side of the field. I didn't like to drag all the way up on the opposite the fine side of the field. However, the quarterback is able to get the ball over there, Bainbridge, but you got to give Brooks credit. Look at the close. Bam, that's good. That's good work. That is good defensive back work right there by Brooks, number two. Boy, he closed on the ball, knocks it down. I like that work. When I see a DB play like that, I get excited. Timberlands McDonald will kick it away again. Now he's going to run a fake. And McDonald is not able to get the first down, not able to get back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> well, hey, man. I don't know about that call, big man. I, I understand you want to try to make something happen. But I, I would have ran that if my punter is about two yards need to get it. I'm not going to have him running when he got to get seven yards. I mean, unless he's a speedster. On that run, he didn't look like a speedster to me, my man. So I don't know if I'd have made that call. Now from the 46-yard line, let's see what Zumwalt East does after the failed fake punt by Timberland. Bird is the quarterback with Brooks in the backfield. And this is Bird. And Marvin Bird breaks outside. Bird down the sideline, cuts it back in. Whoa. How about Whoa. this? And Bird may go after that move. Marvin Bird inside the 20. And Marvin Bird is in for the That's touchdown. Crazy. Unbelievable. 54 yards for the score. That's big time, man. That is big. Roll, big fella, roll. Big time players make big time plays and big time games. Marvin Bird the third, you're a big time player. I'm telling you what, that's an electrifying run. I did not think Marvin Bird the third was going to get that in the house, man. He made an unbelievable stop, start, change of direction. Unbelievable. This kid is special, man. He is special. Extra point is good, and it's 35 to 7. Well, we have played. A total of 18 minutes and 22 seconds, and Bird has four touchdown runs and a touchdown Man, pass. Watch this run right here. Watch this. Whoop! He changed direction here. Watch this. Cut it. Whoop! He changed direction there. And big fella, he's got some speed. He put it in low gear and took that baby to the bank and cashed it in. I mean, his yep. ability. It's unbelievable. The his cutback vision. move inside was remarkable. And just to keep his balance, and look at that change direction with the hands Ooh. of the ball. He has been well coached. This kid has been well coached, and he has some great speed. I mean, you get to see the fundamentals of Marvin Bird the third. You know why he's big time. I mean, someone has taught him, father, mother, brother, someone, coach, has taught this young man at a young age. Because you can see he is so technically sound when he's running the ball, when he's making change in directions, he is really good. This kick's going to go into the end zone, and Timberland will start from their own 20 again. 83 yards generated by Bird on his four touchdown runs, plus the 73-yard touchdown pass. So he has 156 combined yards just on touchdowns in the first quarter and a half. Yeah, and the thing about what I'm liking about him is this. He is so good, but he has his other teammates. Get, he allows them to get in, in the flow, too. And he throw the ball down the field. I mean, you can see how the team just gravitate around it. I mean, he plays defense. That's what I like about high school football. You put your best player on the field and allow your best player to play. Bainbridge and Timberland, and this will be Rayford, and Rayford is brought down by Trokey. Also in on that play for Zumwalt East, in addition to Tanner Trokey, was Vortherms. Vortherms makes a nice play, number eight, Randy. He comes up and he cuts him. That def def defensive line 
of, of Zuma West has played magnificent. They have been able to slow down the running back and make it happen. Now Timberland with the second down play, it's Bainbridge. And Jaylee fumbles. And Zumwalt East and Trokey appear to be on top of it. Let's see who got it. I think Trokey fell on top of it. And Zumwalt East, if they get it back, will have great field position once again. And they've got the football. Man, that's big right there. I'll tell you what. And, 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 I, and let me let me apologize to the Zumwalt East fans because I said West. But East, I'm th this is, when it rains, it pours, my friend. Everything is going right for the Zuma East team. Everything. I mean, you see the defender that time. I couldn't see the number, but he comes around and he hit the ball out of the running back's hand, and they were able to recover this one. Boy, if they score right here, big fella, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to blow out the candles and turn off the lights, and I'm going to tell you, just close the door. We'll lock up. From the 19, and this pass is incomplete. That was intended on the outside for... Four terms, incomplete. If, if Timberland has anything left inside him, they're going to have to dig down, right? This is crucial. I mean, they got to make a stop here. I mean, if you don't make a stop here, they score another touchdown going to halftime. I mean, you're going to come out and feel, hey, man, we can't do nothing to stop this team, this each team. I mean, that's how good they are. Brooks, Christian Brooks has tripped up. But he's able to carry the ball inside the 15-yard line. They'll mark it right at the 15. Now, 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 I'm thinking Brooks is about to take that baby to the house. A nice, nice lane. I need to get a good shot of those big dogs up front because the big dogs from Zoom on East, they're letting the little dogs eat. I mean, they are doing some work up front, man. I like when the big dogs are able to block like that. The big dogs, the offensive line for this Zuma West team is blocking. It's going to be Bird on third down, and Bird is wrapped up and brought down by the defensive end, Steinbecker. All right, fourth down, sir. Yeah, yeah, he's going for it. I mean, I, you think he will kick a field goal? I would, I would go for it. I mean, well, you got Bird. He's making things happen. But if you want to work on your special teams, you put your special team guy in there, get some practice on kicking field goals. Because you know what? Coming down the stretch, if you think you're going to continue to advance in, in the playoffs, special teams are going to be an, an important factor if you can do that. Booth kicks the extra point. This is Trokey. I'm trying to figure Trokey. out which way the wind is blowing. He steps into it That's and nice. blasts it. For good for Zumwalt East, and they increase their lead to 38 to 7. I mean, that was nice. I mean, that was real easy. He could have kicked that probably from 50 yards. Good teams have good special teams. Look at this, man. He effortless. Bam. Man, that baby, yeah, he could have kicked that another 30 yards back. I mean, he put a foot in the ball. 38 to 7 in favor of Zumwalt East. You love to see quality teams, man. And I'm telling you, I have really, this is our first time ever having an opportunity to do this Zumwalt East team in 11 years. They've just been in existence for five. So we're going to say for the last six years, we're not, six years we've not been able to do them. I am telling you, this is an impressive team. Really is. They are really impressive. Special teams. The only weak thing, I, 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 if you're talking about just something you may have a concern, I would think kickoff coverage. Outside of that, this team, this Zoom on East team has been kicking on all cylinders. No pun intended, but they are on kicking this baby on all cylinders. Trokey will kick this one away. Raspberry is in the middle. And this one will go into the end zone for a touchback. Talk about the success that they've had here early on at Zumwalt East. And Scott Ekret has done a great job in getting things going here and getting the program up and running. Ekret has done an outstanding job, I'm telling you. For this team to be as polished as they are in five years, coming in this game with an 8-0 record, Randy, 
this guy right here, I'm going to say, like, like, the, like the young folks say, he's no joke. He is the real deal coach. I mean, this guy has this East team playing at a high level, and it's the right time of the year to have your team you know, execute at a high level. This is Cody Ayers at fullback for Timberland, and Ayers spins ahead for a gain of a couple. Maybe they're trying to get out of this thing or something, you know, trying to let the time uh, run out. But, that, but I, I'm just amazed. I'm, well, I'm, I'm surprised because Coach Collins is normally a good, you know, coach and, and makes and see and, and, and see weakness of a defense and explore it. The middle of that field is wide open. I'm going to just continue to throw the middle of the field and I'm going to force this the zoom on each team to come out of that man coverage. On second down. And a flag flies. They may have taken too much time there, and they did. So a delay of game penalty against Timberland. Now, one thing about the quarterback, now, uh, he's got to be able to watch. Bambridge, Brain, Bain, Brainbridge must look at the, the clock. They got a clock there. It's a 25-second clock that's right in front of him that he can see. So he's got to watch that clock and be very aware of where he is and what's going on in the game. You cannot allow just get under the center, not look down and see a clock. And then that's a benefit. Most schools, most high schools don't have a 25 second clock. So now it's second down and 12. And let's see if Bainbridge gets this one off. He does. He's going to throw. He does. And this was an incomplete. That was intended for Tyler Schumacher, who scored the touchdown earlier. But I like to play. That, that's what you need to do. You can do play action and continue to go to the middle of the field. That, that, that is wide open, and I like the approach. I'm going to come back with it. I'm going to continue to come back with it because it's not like the defenders are really stopping the receivers. The, the pass and the receiver, the quarterback and receivers, they're not on the same page. But I'm telling you, I'm going to continue to throw the ball down the middle of the field. Raspberry into the game in that split back. And here is Bainbridge to throw. He does, and this is caught by Steinkamp. And Ben Steinkamp is across the 30 and is finally brought down as he gets it out to the 30-yard line. This will be close to a first down. It's going to depend on the mark, and they will give him the first down as they mark it at the 31-yard line. But that's, that's good. That's... You know, you clear out the middle of the field. I keep referencing the middle of the field because that's what's open. And you can continue to throw that pass right there. If Timberland wants to do it, they could just make take a steady diet of that and just throw the ball down the middle of the field and be fine. Bainbridge is going to be brought down. He is sacked. Things closed in a hurry for Ryan Bainbridge, the sophomore quarterback for Timberland. And to make the play, the linebacker, the middle linebacker, Alex Nishbach. But when you're putting that kind of pressure up there on a quarterback, I mean, you're asking your quarterback to roll from the left to the, to, from his right hand to the left hand, and then square up and throw it. And there's been too much pressure put on him from the Zoom on each team for that play to work. So it's a difficult call for him. Second down, a flag flies. And Bainbridge gets it out of there. This one is off the hands of Schumacher and incomplete. And I would guess, DJ, that any penalty here will be declined. They'll bring up a third and long for Timberland. Yeah, I, I would decline it for sure. But, but you see. Ball start. If that was a false start, so that play really never worked. It happened. Right. 57.6 seconds, as you see, left in the first half. It declined. Is it a false start? It couldn't be a false start, could it? Yeah. And the play still be good? A false start normally in high school. It's they, a dead ball they foul. Did it. Right. But they declined they the They did decline it, so it's third down. But it was a false start. But with the play, with the, if they had caught the ball, they still came back. Right. But most false starts, they blow the whistle before you even start. Mm -hmm. Now throw to the right side, and this one is picked by King. No, incomplete. King got it and then lost it. And Timberland will kick it away with 41.9 left in the first half. And King has great hands, 
I'm surprised he dropped that one, my man, because I mean he would take that baby to the house if he would have kept his his, his feet. He would have been able to intercept that ball and take that baby to the house. Zumwalt East calls the timeout, and I have to imagine DJ that Coach Ekrit and Zumwalt East will keep their pedal to the metal. Well, I, I'm assuming he calls the timeout because he's thinking about blocking it. I mean, that's the only reason why you would call a timeout in this situation, because the clock stopped anyway on the incomplete pass. Hey, STLHighSchoolSports.com is the collaborative effort of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and St. Louis Sports Agency. Each week, our writers, photographers, and statisticians cover more games, shoot more game photos, and collect more game stats than all other St. Louis print and online media combined. We employ Facebook and Twitter to keep our readers updated. Have a smartphone? Point your phone's web browser to STLHighSchoolSports.com for the latest postings. Here is Marvin Bird the third. He and King back to receive this kick from Josh McDonald. McDonald is able to get it away. And this one's going to fall inside the 40 and be downed at the 36 yard line. And with the 33 seconds left, Zumwalt East will have an opportunity to get some more points on the board. Well, we know they can score in 33 seconds. They scored in about eight seconds in the first possession when they had the ball. So, I mean, they're very explosive offense. Now, if I'm Timberland, I'm going to play almost a prevent defense, but I'm going to take my defensive backs and put them way back and play everything from, from back to front rather than front to back. Bird is going to throw, and he's going long down the right side. Wide open is Mahoney, and he makes the grab inside the 25-yard line. Man, I am telling you what. Everything is clicking on all cylinders for this Zuma East team. I mean, you cannot allow a receiver to get behind you with 20-something seconds to go in a game. That's just You just cannot do that. You got to stay disciplined. You can't worry about a short pass and come rushing up on a short pass, allow the short pass to happen, then come up and make a play. But you cannot let anybody get behind you. Bird to throw again over the middle, and this one is tipped and falls incomplete. That was intended for Mahoney, too. Have I ever, I, I've never said this before, but I would kind of like to see the, the kicker, the, 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 the field goal kicker kick a field goal. I don't like to see that because. I thought last time Trump, Trump Trokey could kick 50-yarder. This would be good. I would like to see them not get any more yards. I would like to see Trokey come in there and kick a, a long field goal. They have plenty of time left to get to that spot. Two timeouts left from the 22-yard line. Bird and Bird is able to get outside. And now he's at the edge and goes out of bounds. And that'll bring up third down from the 22 with about 16 seconds left in the half. Yeah, now, this play right here has got to throw it down toward the end zone. I mean, they still have timeout left. So I'm, I'm still going to throw it. You can even throw it in the middle of the field or you can throw it in the end zone. But the middle of the field, you can go there and call a quick timeout and either come in for a field goal or you can try to get in the end zone. Trips to the left side for Zumwalt East. On third down, Bird will throw to the left side, and this one is incomplete. Oh, Woo. Now, I'm pass intended for Zumwalt East's Tyler Ham. And Tyler Ham's got to make that play, but big time. You, if you, if you want to be one of my big time players to make a big time play, make the play, big fella. He's up in the air. The ball hit his hand. That was a nice. That was a well thrown ball. He's got to just pull it in and make it. He had an opportunity to make that play. They only used six seconds on that play. Now I'm excited. It is fourth down, and you're going to have an opportunity to see Trokey kick one from I the 30. Am, I am excited to see Trokey kick this, because I said that last one, he could have kicked that 50 yards. This ball be set down at the 39-yard line, 29-yard line, and this one is blocked. It is blocked, and Timberland dodges a bullet there. Great job by that Timberland special teams unit as they block Trokey's 39-yard field goal attempt. And let me tell you what happens on a, a long field goal. Compared to a, a PAT or a short field goal, the kicker 
takes a longer time getting to the ball in high school. I mean, the, 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 the mechanics should be the same on long, short, intermediate. But what happens when they're going to kick a field goal, it takes a longer time for them to develop because they feel they got to get more leg into it. But that's, if you see the pros, everything is really automatic because it's all the same. And they didn't keep it the same on that one. Bainbridge gives up the middle. This is the tailback and Rayford is brought down. And that will do it for the first half. Marvin Bird the third had a sensational half. First play from scrimmage for his club, a 73 yard touchdown pass, then runs of six yards, 21 yards, two yards, and then how about this? 54 yarder for Bird, his fourth rushing touchdown of the night. And Zim Waltese leads Timberland at halftime, 38 to seven. You order a comedy. When it arrives, you're in the mood for a drama. With Charter On Demand, you can get the movie you're in the mood for at the press of a button. Honor, integrity, duty. These are the values of the Missouri Military Academy. Since 1889, MMA has been leading the way to success as the premier college prep military boarding school in America. Offering award-winning academics with character development and leadership, MMA is an exemplary private school by the U.S. Department of Education. Learn more by watching our informational videos on Charter's Video On Demand by selecting Channel 1, then I Want More. You will see us in the Education tab. Structure for learning, leadership for life. The Missouri Military Academy. Hi, I'm Andy Bennett. You now have more than one choice when it comes to choosing union electrical contractors. The Associated Electrical Contractors, AEC of St. Louis and Local 57, affiliated with the Carpenters Union, have highly trained electricians ready for your construction projects hassle-free. Local 57 members go through more than five years of hands-on training through Rankin Technical College. Call the AEC for a list of electrical contractors at 314-644-7228. Make the switch today. The Carpenters Union is proud to bring you high school sports on CCIN. Did you miss last week's exciting CCIN high school football game? Tune to Channel 1 to check out the game on demand. And while you're there, check out JC4's weekly recap. Tune in this weekend for Class 3 District 3 play as the Priory Rebels take on the John Burroughs Bombers. JC4 is ready. Are you... change in two years, but not everything has to. With the Charter Price Guarantee, lock in low rates for two years, because sometimes it's nice to know what's on the road ahead. It's about finding a job you love. It's about real jobs from real companies, real close to home, right here in St. Louis. It's about more than a classified ad. It's seeing and learning about companies before you apply. It's about your career and trusting a job website that takes local jobs seriously. Fresh jobs, real jobs, local jobs. It's about time you found the St. Louis job you love. Employers post your open positions on jobbing.com today. Hi, I'm Andy Bennett. You now have more than one choice when it comes to choosing union electrical contractors. Associated Electrical Contractors, AEC of St. Louis and Local 57, affiliated with the Carpenters Union, have highly trained electricians who are safe, productive, and ready for any electrical project. Local 57 members go through more than five years of hands-on training at Rankin Technical College. For a list of electrical contractors, call the AEC at 314-644-7228. Make the switch today.
Welcome back to Fort Zumwalt East High School with Demetrius Johnson and our outstanding Charter Communications crew. I'm Randy Carriker. You see Zumwalt East leading at halftime by a score of 38 to 7 at the outset of this game. Demetrius Johnson told you his hot 104.1 keys to the game. Let's see how the teams have achieved those goals as far as the keys are concerned. Well, Templin has not been able to cage Bird. Bird has gotten out of the cage and he's flying all over the place. And they have not been able to control the ball. Special teams has not played at a stellar level either. So I mean, although they of, did block the field goal, yeah, at the end. but none of the things that we talked about, Timlin has been able to produce. Now Zumo East, on the other hand, they have let Bird set him free. I mean, he's been able to soar all over the place and make big plays, and they got a tremendous start. You talking about fast start? We talked about, and with less than eight seconds, they got a deal, and the defense has played a great job. And you know what? We got a full moon, big fella. Anything can happen. We get ready for the second half, and it's a 38-7 lead for Zumwalt East. Let's talk about what the approach should be for each of these teams. Let's start with Timberland down by 31. Well, if I'm Timberland, I mean, the weakness of the East defense is the middle of the field. I, I will run the play action pass. What I'm going to do, the middle of the field, I'm going to get my tight end involved in the game, or I'm going to slip my running back out of the game. I, I got to get the ball in the hands of my playmakers. I'm going to throw the ball down the field, not depend on the running, because they have not been able to uh, maintain or manufacture any running opportunities. Now, on the other hand, if I'm east, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. I'm going to let Bird do his best, let Bird make the plays, and let Bird just fly all over the field like they, they've been allowing him to do. I'm going to continue to do what I was doing in the first half, and that's depending on my star player, Bird, and let him loose. He has been outstanding so far, so far with four touchdown runs, Bird, and a 73-yard touchdown pass to Mahoney, as DJ mentioned, on the first play from scrimmage for Zumwalt East this evening and, and you know once you get that something's got to happen positively maybe that that block field goal at the end of the half that Timberland was able to, to get on East zoom on East maybe that would spark something inside where they can go forward and do something else our second half kickoff is coming up. It'll be brought to you by the Missouri Military Academy. Structure for learning, leadership for life. And a victory tonight if Zumwalt East hangs on here with their 38-7 lead would put Zumwalt East into the playoffs for the second year in a row. Yeah, and you know what? And, and when you say the second, and the key word that you said, the words was second year in a row. That first year playoff experience is, is, is really important. Going into the playoffs a second time, now you have a different feel. You understand what it takes to win in a playoff. Now you know how to adjust your game. And you know what? I'm expecting Zuma East to be a different team in the playoffs this year. Travis Arndt will boot it away. And this is Bird. And Bird is going to keep it. Bird trying to get outside, and he has tripped up across the 25 at the 26-yard line, and that's where Bird and Zumwalt East will get things started in the second half. Christian Brooks will join him in the backfield. Zach Bumstead is the tight end. Their receivers, Kalan King and Mike Mahoney, along with their other tight end, Connor Vortherms. Up front, they have Christian Brewer, right tackle, Alex Nishbach at right guard along with JT Young at center. Reed Booth is the left guard and Nick Wiesenborn is the left tackle. We get things started in the second half. Zumwalt East with Bird in that little pistol formation. He'll give to Brooks up the middle and good defense right off the bat for Timberland as Brooks is brought down by the defensive end Kevin Kirkpatrick. Yeah, Timberland needs to make a statement here. And that statement is, hey, we're not going to quit. We're going to continue to play hard. And they need to get upfield and make a play. Get a stop here and then cash it in. That's when your, your, your whole mindset changes if you can get a stop and make a play. Bird is going to throw. Gets it away. And this one is caught by King. Spins away from one and crosses midfield with a first down for Zumwalt East. 
Kalan King has had a good night and a good start to the second half. And, and I like Kalan King. Carries going across the middle. A lot of people don't want to go across the middle. Look at this. Bam. He knew he's going to get hit there. And, boy, he takes on a hit and keep moving. I like King, man. I'm telling you what. He is an excellent receiver, man. He has some great soft hands, and he makes plays. 49 yards from the end zone. Zumwalt East. On first down. Bird will run it. And Bird finds a hole, but then is tripped up and only gains two, maybe three, on that first down play. I mean, it seems as if the defensive line right now, by Timlin, they're playing a lot better than they did in the first half. They have been strong up front in this series. They got to continue to play that way. I mean, force Bird to do something. You can't let him do whatever he wants to do. Take the things away from him. Kind of make him one-dimensional if you, if you can do that with Bird. There's a pitch to Brooks. And Brooks is dragged down from behind by Jaley. And this will bring up a third down. Third and five for Zumwalt East. One thing about Zumwalt East with as prolific as Marvin Bird is, they do make an effort to spread the ball around, get the ball into other people's hands so that the focus can't be completely on number 21. And, and that's what I like about this team. I mean, you don't want to be one-dimensional and throw the ball or get a ball on only two players. They have really done an outstanding job in spreading the ball out and spreading that wealth, and I like that. Bird to throw, and this is Brooks. And Brooks is pushed out of bounds. It'll be fourth down for Zumwalt East. I'm curious if Zumwalt East would go for this or not. I, you know, I'm going for it. Looks but, like they will on fourth and three. Yeah, but I would give uh, Timberland credit right now. They've made it concerned enough to try to stop Bird. Now, Bird got it going on outside. He cannot afford it. He's not going to make it up in the middle. Up the middle, Bird. And he doesn't get it, then loses the ball at the end of the play. But this ball is going to be spotted shy of a first down, about a yard short. And Timberland will take over. Yeah, I mean, you knew. If they try to run that up front, I mean, he was not going to get that. And I, and I said it before the snap because, you know, you, they compact the whole defense inside. I, I understand, you know, your offensive line has been blocking, you know, doing the yeoman's job blocking. However, I mean, pride's going to kick in some of these folks, out, these kids out here. They're not going to allow you to just continue to bully them around mm -hmm. on the football field. So if, if I was – the Zumal East coach, I'd have bounced that baby to the outside. I would have taken him, ran him to the left side of the field rather than up the middle. And let Bird use his athletic ability and athleticism to make plays. Quarterback Ryan Bainbridge and Timberland back on the field. Jaley and Rayford in the backfield. Rayford is the tailback. They'll send Steinkamp out to the right side along with Tyler Schumacher split to the left side. Their tight end is Number 89, Sam Bittner. And up front on the offensive line, they have Luke Desane, Nate Christo, Luke Mueller, Nick Shelton, and Cody Coleman. Here is Bainbridge. On first down, he's going to throw. Good block by Rayford. On the right side, it is Jaley, the fullback. And Jaley is a first down and more as he carries it into Zumwalt East territory down to the 44-yard line. That's exactly what I thought they need to do in the second half, come out throwing the ball and being aggressive throwing the ball down the field. Nice play action pass here. I mean, slide your man right out and throw it right to the big fullback. And, boy, I mean, he's pounding people down the field trying to make the extra yards. That's what Timberland needed to do. Make it simple on the quarterback. Don't try to force your quarterback to make those difficult uh, throws. Just have him very compact. Ball's marked at the 46 on first down. It's Rayford cutting it up. And Rayford breaks through. This is Halim Rayford inside the 20 and inside the 15-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds by Mahoney. That's his biggest run of the night. Great run by Rayford. That's what needs to happen. I mean, this good block and a good seal. Watch the kick out here. Bam, I mean, that's good blocking up front by the big dogs. And Rayford, I mean, this is what you wanted him to do. Get the ball, go downhill running the ball. He almost take it to the house. Good blocking by Timberland. You can see a little more urgency and a little more physicality with this Timberland team. Rayford came into this game with 886 yards on the ground. Bainbridge to throw left side and incomplete. 
off the hands of the tight end, Bittner. So Rayford appears to be on his way to a thousand yard season for the Wolves. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, he's a kind of running back. You, know, you give him the ball, he's a workhorse. He's going to make things happen. I like to play. I mean, the play calling has gotten better. I mean, you cannot continue to just not throw the ball down the field. I mean, they're throwing the ball down the field. That's how they get back into this game and get back into it quickly. Ball is at the 14 yard line. Schumacher splits out to the right side. Now Jaylee in motion. And on a little end around at Steinkamp. Ben Steinkamp evades one tackler and is brought down and close to a first down for Timberland. And you can see the play call is different now. I mean, they play, they, they call in the plays. Coach Collins is calling more of aggressive plays now. That's what I want to see. I'm going to see this team compete. We know Timberland has always been able to compete. Now this is what I've been waiting on, and now we're getting it. Now we have an official timeout on the field. Ball is set down right on the five yard line. Make it the 10 for Timberland and Bainbridge to throw. Left side, and this one is caught, and a touchdown for Steinkamp and Timberland. Man, that was a great throw and catch. And let me just say this on that throw. That ball was thrown before the receiver was even there. Ben Steinkamp just made it happen. Bainbridge threw the ball up, Randy. He had a lot of confidence in Ben Steinkamp. He threw it right where he thought the receiver should be and knew his receiver would be there, and it turned out to be a great throw, great execution. And the extra point is good, so it's a 38-14 lead for Zumwalt East. Great execution. Watch this. Watch what the quarterback does. I mean, Bainbridge just threw it right up there to Steinker. I mean, he threw it to the place he knew he was going to be. Even before he came under the break, the quarterback just threw it. Okay, you need to be there. Get there, you big fella. And he gets there for six points. Great job. Watch, watch this just throw. I mean, this is having confidence in your receiver, knowing that he's going to be there. Good job. And a well-executed first offensive drive for Timberland in the second half to get the big run from Halim Rayford and then the touchdown pass from Bainbridge to Steinkamp to cut the lead to 38 to 14. And that's what they needed. They needed to come out aggressively in this in this quarter and make a play. I mean, you chip out, you get another touchdown, this could be another game. If they get a stop right here against this uh, Zumar East team, hey, this game gonna be totally different. This is a short kick, and Bird will take it across the 20. This is Marvin Bird across the 30, and Bird is brought down across the 30-yard line. Demetrius Johnson and the foundation have so many great things going on. Let's talk about one of the events that you have coming up. Yeah, coming uh, November the 6th at the, at the DJCF Center, we're going to have our first boxing match at Gateway to Glory. I mean, you see the, 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 the kid to the right, top right, that's another Sphinx. And, uh, I mean, this kid right in the middle is Josh. He's a great football player at Cardinal Ritter, and he's also a boxer. But this is a fundraiser for our, our facility where we could come and, and, and show, you know, young folks, you know, positive things in the community. So if anybody has the opportunity to come and be a part of this, this is a great time to come and support what we try to do in the community. 314-662-2000, Gateway to Glory, November 6th. Looking forward to that. Gain of three as Jaylee made the stop. Looks like Reed Booth, the left guard, was a little bit shaken up on that play, and he's going to check out of the game. Yeah, and you can see Timberland defense has made some adjustments. The, the, the line is playing a lot more aggressive, and those linebackers are shooting that gap, making it a little more difficult right now for this East team. Let's see how East responds to a Timberland team who's playing a little more physical this half. This is Brooks. Christian Brooks down the left sideline, and he's pushed out of bounds as Elliott Brown had to come over and make the play to knock him out. Well, that's good, good response right there. I mean, you, you give it to him, Brooks, and 
He makes a nice run. Good blocking up here. Good blocking on the receivers. Allow Brooks to get around that edge and make a nice, nice game. Good job. It's a first down for the Wool or the Lions of Zumwalt East. Lions and Wolves going at it tonight here at Zumwalt East. From their own 49 yard line, Zumwalt East and Bird. This will be Bird, and they're able to get a hold of him and bring him down. Outstanding and defense. Great job. That was Latrell Roberts that made the tackle as he chased Bird down from behind. Well, I love to see the big fellas up front do the work. Latrell Robertson does a great job. Come off the blocker and get in a very elusive quarterback who's been making things happen all day. Yeah, and that's what you want to do. You want to be able to, to come off the line of scrimmage, make a play, be physical, and, and, and that's what you got to do on the defensive line. I think they call it a personal foul, Randy. One, two, three, Against Timberland. Six, seven, this penalty will be marked off and provide a first down for that, Zumwalt East. Yeah, that's devastating there. I mean, that is a devastating play. I mean, you had the momentum. You just make a nice play. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that, that was on uh, Miller, number five, because I saw, the, saw him coming off the field and the coach screaming at him. So I'm assuming he made it. I mean, that, that, that can hurt your team. The team just made a nice step. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and now you get an opportunity to possibly, you know, put him in a very difficult position. Now you, you let him out of it. This is Bird. And Marvin Bird is going to take off for another touchdown. This one for 37 yards. And his fifth rushing touchdown of the night extends the Zumwalt East lead. Man, that, I mean, every time you think they got him, he makes something happen. I mean, it's just it's an ISO. I mean, it's just a, a, a ISO lead. And what they're doing, they're taking their back and ISOing them through a hole and having the quarterback to the fake it. This is a this is a design run by the quarterback. So he's just taking the, the 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 fake back becomes the blocker, and he takes it up right to the nice hole. Outstanding execution. Now with Booth hurt, Trophy will try the extra point, and having two kickers comes in handy as he hits it to make it a 45-14 lead for Zumwalt East. Yeah, watch this. It's just a ride over here. Boy, that's just a fake option, and getting right in the hole. Now the running back. On the fake, he has the ability to give the quarterback has the ability to give it to the running back or keep it. That time it was a fake. But now right here, this was just a total fake counter and give it to the court and let the quarterback keep that. That was a design play that Marvin uh, Bird the third was going to keep the ball. Marvin Bird the third is a senior, 5'9", 175, came into this game with 1,351 yards on the ground, well over 100 tonight. And he also came in with 507 yards through the air and has been prolific through the air tonight as well, including a 73-yard touchdown pass on Zumwalt's first play from scrimmage. He's really put on the show tonight, I mean, offensively and defensively. I mean, and he sticks his head in there on the defense, so you can tell is his heart. I mean, he's got some courage. He'll go out there and make a play if he has to on that defensive end. He's going to make a nice multiplayer for multi-purpose player for some university. A low kick, and now it's mishandled. And finally, Steinkamp has to jump over his own man Whoa. and is brought down inside his own 15-yard line. Man, I mean, think about it. I mean, you got a team like this Hazelwood, this, this Zoom on East team has been very physical. Now you, you get a kickoff return and you are being tackled by your own man. That's when you know you're having a tough night. When your own teammate is hitting you. Working from the 14 yard line, Timberland. Bainbridge going deep down the left side for Steinkamp who makes the catch. 
Steinkamp trying to get away from Mahoney, and he's brought down at the 47-yard line. That is open all night, so I don't even see why Timberland even think about uh, running the ball. I mean, they're in a man-to-man -man across the board. And, and you got to turn around and watch the ball. You didn't turn around. Defensive back never turned around. And, and that's what happens now, Randy. A lot of times those plays are designed to be thrown short. When a defensive back, his head is looking at the receiver, the quarterback purposely can underthrow the ball, and the receiver makes the adjustment. That was a good play. From the 47, it's first down for Timberland. Bainbridge with Rayford in the backfield with him. Bainbridge to throw again. And now he hits McDonald. Down the middle he goes. And he's brought down at the 20-yard line. The pass complete to Josh McDonald and another big game for Timberland. The main score about 100 points total tonight. I'm telling you, hey, th that is open. That's why I didn't understand why Timberland wasn't doing that earlier in the game. Just throwing the ball in the middle of the field. That middle of the field is very loose for this uh, Zuma West team. I'm going to continue to throw the ball down the middle of the field. Great tackle by Marvin Bird to bring McDonald down at the 21-yard line. The scrappy Timberland team, Bainbridge overthrows McDonald on this play. They aren't going anywhere, are they, DJ? And that's what I like about Timberland. I mean, they, they're going to continue to fight through it. I mean, regardless of the score, they, they're fighting themselves through it. If they can get a couple stops and score a couple touchdowns, hey, man, this thing could be a totally different ball game. Second down play coming up. Bainbridge sends three receivers to the right side. Steinkamp to the left. going to throw to the right side. And this is Schumacher. And Schumacher carries it down to the five-yard line for Timberland. And they are on the move. What a terrific drive by the Wolves. Well, you know what? It started because they're throwing the ball. And that's what they should have been doing in there because the, the Zumo East team said, okay, we're going to force you guys to throw the ball. Can you beat us throwing the ball down the field? And that's the mentality they took. And you see what's happening now. They mark this one at the seven. Out of the shotgun, Bainbridge throws to the left side, and this one is incomplete. That was intended for McDonald. That was a pretty good pass, too. McDonald just dropped the ball, put the ball hit him right in the basket. You got to bring that baby in, especially when you're down in this game like this. You got to make plays, you got to get on the scoreboard, and you got to take advantage of it quickly. So now it's second down and goal from the seven. Bainbridge under pressure gets it away, and this one is caught. And it's Steinkamp into the end zone for the touchdown for Timberland as they're on the board again, 45 to 20. That's, a, that's great execution. I mean, making things happen. Ben Steinkamp, number 10, he makes a play. Steinkamp comes down, and there's a bubble screen. Got some great blocking in front of him, able to walk in the end zone. No one touches him. That's a great, great execution by Timberland. Arndt with the extra point. And it is a 45-21 game. In order for that bubble screen to work, you got to have blocking downfield. Look at the blocking downfield for Steinkamp. Steinkamp, bam, boy, I'll tell you what. You had two come from, from inside. Watch the blocking here, Randy. Unbelievable. Look at the two big dogs. They own a, they, they own a horse, watch the block, and pow, pow. I'm telling you what, that defender got wiped out by the two big dogs who came down and made a nice block to blow, uh, let Steinkamp, Steinkamp get in the end zone. Good job. So now Timberland will kick it away. There's Ben Steinkamp, came into this game with 29 catches, 564 yards and five touchdowns. And a pretty impressive night. Steinkamp with a couple of touchdown catches, a 10-yarder and a 7-yarder, both here in the second half. And there's Craig Collins, the head coach at Timberland, and he has to admire the grit 
of his team. Arndt will kick it away. And a fair catch called at the 30 yard line and that's where East will get things going. And, and I liked it. I like players that truly understand the game and have a football IQ. Yeah, you can't ca call a fair catch like a punt on a, on a kickoff. A lot of folks don't ever do it. I mean, but you can do that anytime you want to. Bortherms made the fair catch and the other aspect to making a fair catch on a kickoff is that you're allowed a free kick any kind of kick you want to make after you fair catch a kickoff. So if you had a kicker with a really good leg and it was a high kickoff like that and your guy caught it at the 40 yard line you could try a 70 yard field goal if you so desired. This is the running back Christian Brooks and Brooks carries it up near midfield and across midfield. Every time you think this Timberland team has an opportunity. Zoom on each team responds. Look at Christian Brook here. I mean, boy, that's a great block. Oh, great blocks up there. And then he's doing it on his own, getting down the field. But boy, yeah, two great blocks of spring. Christian right up the middle. Christian Brooks, great run. Good vision of watching his blockers. Ball resting on the 50 yard line. Bird with the first down for Zumwalt East. Lions leading here 45 to 21. And Bird is going to take this one himself. And he is pulled backwards and brought down. Great penetration there by that defensive line of Timberland. And making the tackle for the Wolves was John Hummel. Yeah, Hummel does a great job, number 85, and that's what you want to do. He comes, he penetrates inside, he grabs the bird and, 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 and bring him down to the ground. That's penetration. That's what you need to do to win a game. You got it. It starts up front on any situation. It starts up front. Hummel just a sophomore, 6'3 and 217. Brooks again. And Brooks pulls his way for a gain of a couple. Not much more there for Christian Brooks and Zumwalt East. Man, I tell you what, the Zoom, the Zoom on East team come up and, and and they pull around the corner, but I got to give a kid credit. Although he got pound, he made a play. He stacked that baby up. The Timberland team, I mean, he just stacked it up. He got pummeled on the play, but he forced the play to stop right there. Good job, good force. On third down, Bird is going to throw. Now he's sacked. Bird is brought down as the defense for Timberland was able to race in and make the play. Hummel in there again. Steinbecker also in on the play. Yeah, that was a, a cover sack. I, I mean, fake, nice fake here, but now nowhere to go with the ball. All the receivers are covered. Now the defense come in and, and Swarm the quarterback bird, not allow him to get downfield. That's great defense by Timberland. And the energetic Hummel with a couple of big plays in that series. And on fourth and nine, Bird will kick it away for Zumwalt East. Here is the kick. It's high and it's short. And it's going to take a Timberland bounce. So Timberland gets the full football back. Take a look at the small school poll in the St. Louis metro area. And there you see Burroughs and Priory. We have them next week. That Miller Career Academy team, I know you yeah, really like them, they, DJ. They are, they are real. I mean, they went on DeSmet Field and beat DeSmet. So that's a big-time team. I'm hoping we can get one of their games in the playoff. And when you look at the John Burroughs and the Priory, I mean, those are top. these are top-quality teams. Every team in the top ten deserve to be in the top ten. Timberland with the football back. First and 10. Working from their 36 yard line. And a throw to the left side. Caught by Steinkamp. Steinkamp is brought down by Mahoney. A flag flew as that pass was made, and it'll be holding against Timberland. 
And what I like about Timberland, they have really adjusted, they readjusted their game in the second half, and they're throwing the ball down the field, and they're throwing the ball effectively. Mm -hmm. And that's what they needed to do early in this game. I never, I didn't understand earlier in the second uh, quarter or in the first half why they didn't aggressively throw the ball downfield because Zuma West stack the box and say we're going to force you to throw it we're going to play man behind you and let's see if you want to throw it and in the first half Timberland didn't want to throw the ball now they throw the ball with a lot of success after the penalty the ball is marked at the 26 yard line Bainbridge the sophomore quarterback He's going to throw again. This one is tipped and almost intercepted, and it's knocked away. Great defensive play by the offensive lineman of Timberland, and it kept the ball away from Zumwalt East. Yeah, I got to give credit. That's great heads up football by number 62, Cody Coleman. Cody Coleman. I mean, he makes a play. He sees the ball up in there, and he comes and tackle. The defender who almost intercepted. That's great heads up play by Cody Coleman. JT Young is the guy that with the ball in the air had the opportunity, but he was knocked away by the time the ball came down. Yeah, because the reaction of Cody yeah, Coleman, he saw the play and he made the play, he did exactly what he should have done in that situation. So now on second down, Bainbridge is going to throw, fakes and is hit and dropped. The sack by Zumwalt East as JT Young makes up for the lack of the interception by getting in there and hammering the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, that, that play took too long to develop. The receivers weren't able to get out. It was out and up. You see the pump fake there? But now, boy, I tell you what, boy, that's good pressure up front. The big fella comes up and makes a nice play inside. JT Young. Boy, he's played a great game. JT Young, the last couple plays have been been involved in the last few plays. Third and 34. Bainbridge and McDonald is hit and dropped by Marvin Bird. And that'll bring up fourth and very long for Timberland. Good job by Marvin Bird, quarterback. Slant, you keep the ball in front of you. He comes up and make a nice tackle. That's what you want to do. Let the guy catch the ball and tackle him. Don't play up back play back to up and that's exactly what bird did fourth and 26 mcdonald will kick it away good boot by mcdonald king will watch it take a huge timberland bounce before the football goes out of bounds at the 38 yard line and that was a great punt Outstanding punt. That's what you want to do. You want to be able to punt the ball like that. Man, that was a great punt. And so Zumwalt East will start at their own 37 with 17 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Zumwalt East up by a score of 45 to 21. And, you know, and I'm going to give Timberland credit. I mean, they're still fighting. I mean, you get a couple breaks here, get a turnover defensively, score quick. Man, this game is, I mean, it's really not over. They're in a position to win the quarter 14 to 7. And coming out after the half in which they trailed 38 7, that's one of the little victories that Coach Collins will hang his hat on with this team. This is the running back, Christian Brooks. And Brooks is going to race inside the 20 yard line and race inside the 10 for Zumwalt East as he is brought down inside the 10-yard line and Timberland's defense, Cody Ayers, showing some grit and determination to race from behind and tackle him. Man, I am telling you, that was a great run right here. I mean, boy, I mean, Brooks bounced that baby out, out front. He gets down the field, boy. I'm, I'm thinking he's about to take that baby to the house. But now he never quit. Look at this player, Pam. That, that was, that was Elliot 21. Brown that made the tackle, and yeah. that was the final play of the third quarter. Elliot Brown never quit on a play, and that's what you got to have. You got to have heart. A couple of touchdowns in that third quarter for Timberland, but this is the play that highlights the third quarter. A long run by Christian Brooks, and Zumwalt East has the lead as we head to the fourth quarter, 45-21 over Timberland.
High School Sports on CCIN. Brought to you by the Carpenters Union. Nailed down a career in carpentry today. The Missouri Military Academy. Structure for learning, leadership for life. And by STLHighSchoolSports.com. Powered by Charter. Hi, I'm Andy Bennett. You now have more than one choice when it comes to choosing union electrical contractors. The Associated Electrical Contractors, AEC of St. Louis and Local 57, affiliated with the Carpenters Union, have highly trained electricians ready for your construction projects hassle-free. Local 57 members go through more than five years of hands-on training through Rankin Technical College. Call the AEC for a list of electrical contractors at 314-644-7228. Make the switch today. Honor, integrity, duty. These are the values of the Missouri Military Academy. Since 1889, MMA has been leading the way to success as the premier college prep military boarding school in America. Offering award-winning academics with character development and leadership, MMA is an exemplary private school by the U.S. Department of Education. Learn more by watching our informational videos on Charter's Video On Demand by selecting Channel 1, then I Want More. You will see us in the Education tab. Structure for learning, leadership for life. The Missouri Military Academy. Maybe your small business isn't so small. You think big, dream big, have big ideas. And Charter Business offers the tools you need to find big success. Internet, phone, and TV. So you can reliably connect with customers and achieve bigger results, which is a big win for any small business. Save 20% or more on Charter Business Internet and phone and get Charter Business TV for free. Call 877-BIZBUNDLE today. The Carpenters Union is proud to bring you high school sports on CCIN. Did you miss last week's exciting CCIN high school football game? Tune to Channel 1 to check out the game on demand. And while you're there, check out JC4's weekly recap. Tune in this weekend for Class 3 District 3 play as the Priory Rebels take on the John Burroughs Bombers. JC4 is ready. Are you... When you text, you save. Text SAVE to 94594 and get discounts and offers from area businesses. Text to save on things like fast food, pizza, concert tickets, car washes, haircuts, sporting events, and more. Now you can text to save by getting special deals on the things you want. It's easy and convenient. Just text SAVE to 94594 to sign up for future offers. Then get the deals sent straight to your cell phone. Just show the text message in the store or restaurant and save money on the spot. You text to save. After the long run by Christian Brooks, first and goal from the five-yard line of Timberland for Zumwalt East, already leading by a score of 45 to 21. Demetrius Johnson, Randy Carriker, and our Charter Communications crew. Great to have you with us at Zumwalt East. This is the first time we've been at Zumwalt East in St. Peter's, and it is a magnificent facility. The school itself and the football facility Top notch. Oh man, this is one of the state of the art facilities over here. Man, if you never had an opportunity to be here, boy, this is great. Brooks with an opportunity to finish it off, and he gains a couple on that run. After his long run, which he was caught from behind, Coach Ekrit and Marvin Bird wanted to give him the opportunity to rumble into the end zone. It is amazing how how good this uh, Zoom All East team is in a short period of time. I mean, they are very good. They have some had some rough going at the beginning. Brooks again. And he has stopped as that Timberland defense trying to remain stout. Making the tackle was Jesse Detheridge, the defensive tackle. Yeah. When I look at Timberland, I, I just think about the success they've had over the years with Demonte Ball and the other players. And, and I'm telling you what, this team is not going to quit. They're, not, they're never going to quit. And that's what I like about the Timberland team. It's a reflection of their coach. Here's another pitch to Brooks. And he's tripped up inside the five by Clay Miller and can't get into the end zone, so it'll be fourth down. That's an excellent play by number 42, Clay Miller, because he was getting blocked. He was getting blocked, and he still was able to make that play. That's a great job, you know, fighting through a, a, a situation and still get in to make a play. Because if he don't make that play, I mean, Brooks walks in the end zone. 
On fourth down, Zumwalt East is going to go for it. And now we have movement on that Timberland defensive line, I believe. And that will move Zumwalt East half the distance to the goal line. And you can, you know why a lineman jumps outside because they're trying to anticipate that snap count. You, you know they're going to run it at you. You're trying to anticipate the snap count. And sometimes, you know, a quarterback, a good quarterback, will change up the cadence. Fourth and goal at the two. This is Bird into the end zone for the touchdown. Where is it, Walt East? The two-yard touchdown run for Marvin Bird. How many touchdowns is that for him? That is his one, two, three, four, five, sixth of the night. Whoa. That is a, a, a there's got to be some type of record somewhere. Uh, the shit, I'm assuming it's going to be at least a record for the school. I he, would think so. He has dominated this game. Every time you look at him, I mean, constantly scoring a touchdown in also, all situations. Uh, as a touchdown pass, Trokey with the extra point try here. And this one is zipped through to make it a 52-21 lead in favor of Zimwald East. Now, you saw a trokey compact right there after this play here. I mean, you see Bird just get right behind the big dogs, run right into the end zone. Gets right behind his guys. I mean, look at that. I mean, they form a wall for him. Gets right behind that wall. Walks right in for six. Okay. Yeah. Marvin. And, you know, and I'm amazed he's not getting a cup of water because he's put in a full day's work, my friend. He's come in. I mean, he's worked a 9-5. Oh, no doubt about it. I think he's got some overtime. Punt return, kickoff return, punting, quarterback, defensive back. He does it all for <laughs> Zoom Walt East. He's definitely not an hourly employee. No. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely salary. So he's going to work. I mean, because he's putting in, I mean, a full day's work. You know, on time, overtime, boy, he's, he's put on the show tonight. Raspberry, along with Steinkamp and Miller, will go back to receive the kickoff. I bet Trokey's leg is getting tired here with all the kickoffs that he's had tonight. 52 points on the board for Zumwalt East. But I bet Trokey would like to have that more than not having that leg working tonight. But I'm telling you, I really appreciate how this uh, Zumwalt East team is, is wearing the pink for breast cancer awareness. I mean, I really appreciate that. Short kick taken by the up back for Timberland. And uh, bullying his way across the 45 yard line with actually a pretty nice return for Timberland is Brett Reimers. So Reimers with the return and Timberland with the football back. Let's see how aggressive Timberland continue to be. I, mean, I like what they did in the last series, throwing the ball down the field. That's what you want to do. You want to stretch the field. I mean, you got to continue. I mean, you're down. You, know, you got to throw the ball. You got to score quick if you want to try have any chance of getting back in this game. Great job tonight by the sophomore quarterback, Ryan Bainbridge, the six foot, 190 pounder. And he is leading this club and Rayford with a nice run on first down for Timberland as their offense keeps churning out the yards. Yeah, I mean, they are. I mean, they have not quit. They still make the plays and Rayford, look at him. He's getting the ball. I mean, he's a big old. Now, he's a big running back. Man, he's a bruising running back. Second down and one. This is a good down to take a shot no, if you're Timberland. Yeah, no doubt about it because if you're Timberland, I mean, you're going to use all four of these to get a first down. Bainbridge will pass on the right side to Schumacher, and Schumacher is doubled up and brought down. I like it when Bainbridge sits back and throws the ball. I like his ability to make plays with, with, with his arm because the, the game plan that Zuma East came in with was to, hey, force – the pass and Timberland didn't want to force the pass. They wanted to stay or what they do best is running the ball. Now they have to pass the ball. 
First down from the 40. And a flag flies as that play got underway a little bit early. And it is false start against Timberland. So that'll set him back five. Yeah, I mean, every time they get forward, they go backwards. It, it, I, I'm assuming the center may have forgotten the snap count on that because everybody was moving except the center. Or the center remembered it and everybody else forgot it. <laughs> on first and 15, Bainbridge will take the snap out of the pistol formation. And Rayford carries a tackler with him across the 40-yard line. Well, I mean, that big fella be working, man. Rayford is a big boy, and he's working. I mean, that's effort. That's not quitting. That's trying to get it done at all costs. Watch him literally carry a potential tackler trochee for five yards. <laughs> man, and boy, I tell you what, I liked that effort right there. I mean, that, that, that's an effort to want to win. On the left side, it's Steinkamp. And Steinkamp is brought down by Mike Mahoney. That's the success right there, to be able to drop back in the pocket, give your quarterback time, and let him throw the ball downfield. We have a Timberland injury on the field over on the far side. That is Steinkamp, the receiver on that play. Yeah, Steinkamp runs a nice route. It makes a nice little play. Like he's cramping. Yeah, when, when they start massaging that the calf muscle like that, that's when you know you're, he's cramping. Unusually warm weather here in the St. Louis metro area for late October. I mean, it really is. But it's cool tonight. So, I mean, cramping is kind of you know, it's kind of different. I wouldn't assume anyone to be cramping in this weather. To stay hydrated, though. Yeah. And speaking of heat, good luck to the Rams as they play in Tampa, where it's supposed to be 90 degrees on game day. Hey, you know, I, I really like what I'm seeing with the Rams. Sam Bradford is a poised quarterback. He's making things happen. The defense has really played well, and I'm happy to see that. And, and I'm amazed now that people are saying they can't win seven, eight games. I, I think it win that, that division. I mean, it's a really weak division. I mean, wh why couldn't they win it? I'm with you. I think they can. And their head coach, Steve Spagnolo, has the elements of the traits of a good head coach. That doesn't mean he's going to be one. This is Schumacher for Timberland. Gets away from a tackler. <laughs> Schumacher inside the 10, into the end zone for the touchdown for Timberland. Schumacher with a 39-yard reception and great effort for the fourth touchdown of the night for the Wolves. I mean, you got to give them credit. They have not quit. This Timberland team, I mean, they are doing whatever they have to do. The, the Wolves are clawing themselves and scratching and biting to stay in this game. That's what I like about this Timberland team. I mean, they, they've never quit. I mean, you can't, under no circumstances, this team is going to quit. They're going to continue to play hard. Schumacher catch the ball, turn it upfield, makes a nice run for a touchdown. Fourth touchdown pass of the night for Bainbridge. And they'll go for two. Bainbridge looks to the right side and throws into the end zone for the two-point conversion as it's caught by McDonald. Oh, that's a nice option route by McDonald. He comes in, and he's like he's going to run a, a crossing route. He stops, and he comes back out. Good execution, good play. I like what I'm seeing. This Timberland team is not going to quit. They got a lot to build on. And right here, Schumacher does a great job getting the ball. He eludes some tackles, knocks some tackles, and he runs that baby into the end zone for six points. That's a good job. 52 to 29, and a very impressive second half for a team that we thought might be facing a running clock at the start of the second half. Coming into the second half, Timberland was down 38 to 7. And now they've outscored their opposition by a score of 21-14 in the second half. Bainbridge with three touchdown passes, two to Steinkamp in the second half, and one to Schumacher. Schumacher second of the night. So Bainbridge with two each to Steinbridge, uh, or rather Bainbridge with two each to Steinkamp and Schumacher. Yeah, if, if Timberland is able to get any stops, Randy, they could be. They could have been right back in this game, and he truly not out of this game. If they can get the ball right now, maybe on a turnover and get a quick score, man, this thing could change. The dynamics of this game could change immediately. Timberland has outscored 
Zumwalt East here in the second half by a score of 29 to 14. Make that 22 to 14. Yeah, that's supposed to have been an onside kick, but the kicker never did give his team a chance. I mean, it's a certain way those kickers got to hit that baby on the top of the football and make the ball bounce up in the air that would allow his team to get down there, but was not able to get that, that spin on the ball. So Zumwalt East will have it from their own 44-yard line. And Zumwalt East is going to put in some of their reserves. And if I'm Zoom on East, I'm going to run the ball. I want to the clock. If they get the ball back, get it back about three or four minutes to go in the game. And, you know, we know they pretty much have it secured by then. Number 18 is Jordan Schmidt at quarterback. The tailback is Cody Wright. This is Schmidt, and Schmidt is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So a smart move by in my opinion, at least, by Coach Ekret of Zumwalt East, keeping his starters healthy for the next action in district play and having them rested up for the playoffs and perhaps as importantly, getting some action for some of those reserves. You never know when you're going to need them and you want to have all the game action you can for those guys. Now that's true. I mean, injuries happen. Anything can happen in a situation where that would force you to put one of your young players in the game and get them game, actual game experience is going to help them in the future. Schmidt, a sophomore, six foot and 160. It's a little different. Schmidt's run, Schmidt running this thing mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> a, bird. a bird, I'm telling you. But I understand what, what I would rather do rather than having uh, Jordan Schmidt to just run quarterback his, his draws, I give him ball to the running back and see what the running back can do. New pair of defensive ends in there for Timberland as checking in is Hummel along with Nick Glenn. I like them using the clock and I mean they got the 25 second clock in front of them mm -hmm. so they can get it all the way down and then snap the ball. Schmidt will take it all the way down and run it himself up the middle. And he's popped down in a, maybe a yard for Jordan Schmidt. Well, if I'm Jordan Smith, I'm going to look at the coach and say, hey, coach, <laughs> come on, man. Let me hand the ball to the running back. I am getting pounded with this quarterback keeper. That's what I'm going to tell the coach. Bam, look at that. Boy, that was a nice, a very nice hit coming up there and putting the wood on him. I mean, that's a good play. Good to see Ben Steinkamp back in there along with Miller deep. And Bird has to punt for Zumwalt East. Marvin Bird with the snap and the boot. And a whistle before that play got underway. Let's see what the infraction is here for Zumwalt East. The officials are actually talking to the Zumwalt East captain. Bird will have to kick it again as that play. I'm assuming they said they may have not started the clock or something. Now more conversation. Well, I'm wondering if they're going to try to put some more clock on the time on the clock. Bird is going to go over to the sidelines to talk to yeah. Scott Ekrit. Well, you know, the clock was running when he kicked that, when he punted the ball. Now, did they put that back on the clock or what? They shouldn't. Yeah. Could have been an inadvertent whistle, which would make sense. Yeah. There was no flag on the play. No. Kick the ball and do it in the right time. So now the officials have to figure things out before Bird will come back in to punt it away with his team leading yeah. well, by a score that, of yeah, 52 more, to 29. Yeah, they want to put more time. Did they, did they want to put more time on clock and they leave it like that? Let's see. Going to go over and talk to the 
Zoom wall east sideline. Oh, yeah. They put uh, some more time on the clock. Because I know if the play, play were dead, you got to replay it and put the, t the original time back on there. And now we're finally ready to resume play here at Zoom Walt East. Should the clock be running now? Bird with a good kick. Steinkamp will call for the fair catch, and Timberland has it back. Hey, watch all of the highlights from your school's big game with Charter On Demand. Go to Channel 1, I Want More, Sports, and then High School Sports to view 2009 High School Sports highlights. Plus, High School Sports On Demand will be updated with all the big games from this season. Check out your teammates on the big screen with High School Sports On Demand with Charter Digital TV and On Demand. It's your own library of movies and shows. The newest releases are always in stock, available and ready to watch. On your schedule, for more information on Charter On Demand or the Charter Bundle, call today at 888-GET-CHARTER. Now Timberland with the football back. They have been able to put some points on the board. And once again, it is a pass to the right side and Josh McDonald has had a productive second half. He really has and, and, and really the, the, the beam because he's able to run an option route. I mean he goes inside he forced that corner back to jump on an inside route then he just slide it back outside the quarterback is able to throw it to him outside and that's very safe route because you're throwing it the opposite side of the defensive back. Rayford is a single setback behind Bainbridge the quarterback. And throwing to the right side again. This is Schumacher. And Schumacher is grabbed. And a flag does fly as the face mask infraction will be called here. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested to see that play again. Yeah, they call a face mask, so it's probably a 15 yarder on that one. And now the ball is marked at the 35. Okay, let me see this play here. See if it catches it. You know well, what? Why aren't they? Hey, Randy, that, that's that's a uh, unless he grabbed him going down. That's a that was a bad call. Well, they picked it up. They didn't. No, they gave it to him. Ball they, is at the 35. And now pass to the left side and trying to get away is <laughs> a Timberland receiver, and he can't. That was. Ben Steinkamp. That, that, that was, you know, big man, that was a bad call. I mean, you could grab a guy up top like that. You just can't grab his, his shoulder pad. He did nothing wrong. The, the official was in a position where they didn't see that. But that was a bad call by the official. That was not a horse collar nor a face mask. On second down, Timberland. And they're going to give on a reverse. Oh, man, this is Schumacher don't... throwing yes, deep down the right side, and oh, the pass on. is caught. Whoa. Caught oh, no, by Stein. Oh, Goodness. they're going to say incomplete. Whoa. He made the catch, and they're going to call Whoa. it incomplete. Oh, no, big fella. I'm telling you, I thought he caught that he one. Man. Whoa. I'm thinking he caught that one. You said he did. I said he did, too. Let's, find, let's look at the replay here. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's we a good catch. It. That's a good catch there, man. That that's a good catch. The fish who couldn't see that one. Boy, I tell you, they they missed two of them tonight, man. That was an excellent catch by the receiver going down deep and get that one. I like that play right there. That's the way to go down to get the ball. And the official behind the play couldn't see it. He asked for help from the the official on the sideline. And well, maybe yeah. they should have did a review with us up here, big man. <laughs> we could have told him it was a catch. So that brings up third down, and after the false start, it'll be third down and 12. Third and 13. Raspberry will check in. Well, to the credit of 
Steinkamp, even though he knew he made that catch, he did not argue. Bainbridge to throw again. Good protection again. He throws and incomplete off the hands of Ben Steinkamp. And so it'll be fourth down, and Timberland will be placed in a position to punt once again. And now they're going to go for it on fourth down as Bainbridge is going to stay in there. Fourth down play coming up for Timberland, and they can put Zumwalt East if they don't get the first down in great field position. Let's see what they have. Bainbridge is going to throw on the right side. This one is bounced to the intended receiver, Steinkamp, incomplete. Well, we know that wasn't an incomplete one. There was no question on that one, big man. That one. So Zumwalt East gets the ball back, and they are in Timberland territory. Well, I'm sure they're going to do what they did the last possession, just uh, let the, the reserve quarterback just run the ball. I mean, with three minutes and 52 seconds to go. I mean, this game is over. That quarterback is Jordan Schmidt. Marvin Bird with a magnificent night for Zumwalt East. He's out of the game along with Brooks, their starting tailback. So Schmidt with Cody Wright joining him in the backfield. This is Schmidt. Tries to find a hole and he's brought down by Ayers, Cody Ayers with the tackle for Timberland. I mean, they're doing the right, smart thing and I'm talking about Zoom on East. I mean, just let your quarterback run the ball. Don't have to worry about trying to hand it off or anything. Let the clock continue to run and get up out of here. I mean, a victory, get ready for the next round. Classy move by Scott Ekrit. He doesn't need to rub it in. It'll be second down and 10 for Zumwalt East. This is Wright, and Wright is brought down. That defensive line hasn't quit for Timberland. That was Kevin Kirkpatrick with the tackle. And, you know, and that's what I like, and I can appreciate that by the Timberland team. I mean, they are truly fighting to the end. I mean, you hear coaches and players and well, people always make the statement fight to the end and it's really not a fight to the end this similar team is truly fighting to the end even though they trail 52 to 29 zoom wall east will run the play clock down the snap will take place with about two and a half minutes left on the clock there it is and Wright <laughs> spins, thought there was somebody behind him to pitch to on the option, but Wright had run the other way, so Schmidt didn't have anybody to pitch to. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't just pitch the ball. I mean, I'm glad he didn't assume his teammate was going to be there. So, I mean, that was a smart part by him to just to recognize that no one was there and just keep it. That, that was really smart by Jordan Schmidt. It was interesting because When you uh, saw that play unfold, Wright was going to the right. And I think there was just a miscommunication there on the play call. And by the way, on fourth down, they are going to go for it. Here's the quarterback going to the left. Wright was going to the right. He was supposed to be right behind the quarterback for the option. Yeah, I got, it. I got a miscommunication right there. Someone went the other way, the other person went the other way. And Look, at, I mean, I give him credit. Whoop! Nobody I mean, there. right. He did not pitch the ball, so I give him credit for being smart enough to understand. Because sometimes when you run it, you just flick it, thinking that the, the player is going to be there. This time he looked first and didn't see the, the player, so he did not pitch the ball. That was good. Good play by Schmidt, the sophomore quarterback. Very good. Now this is Rayford, Aleem Rayford up the middle. And Rayford races through that defense. Finally is spun around and brought down. And it was Wright who made the tackle. You gotta feel good about that run. 
I mean, you know, this game is practically over. Well, it's not practically. It is over. Only thing that's holding this game up is the time on the clock. But, you know, Rayford is still running hard. That's what I like about it. I, I like his ability to get the ball and run hard and run physical. Timberland would like to get one more touchdown on the board before they get out of here. Rayford again. And Rayford this time is stacked up and knocked backwards. And the clock will run into the next snap will take place inside a minute. Yeah, that was Lucas Jordan carrying the ball. They took Rayford out for a second. So Jordan had the carry and Rayford is back in there now. Yeah. I know Rayford would like to at least end up with a touchdown here knowing this is his last game playing against uh, this, this East team. Bainbridge looking and throwing and this one is caught. And the clock keeps running as the receiver could not get out of bounds. And we have 30 seconds left. Now back to throw is Bainbridge and to the right side. This one's complete to McDonald and McDonald brought down at the 12 yard line with 11.4 seconds remaining on the clock. I wonder why they stopped the clock to move the sticks. Oh, was that a first down? Yes. And this will likely be the final play of the game unless it's an incomplete pass. Bainbridge wanted to get his team up to the line of scrimmage and going, and the referee says, hold on a second. Let's get our sticks moved, and I will tell you when you can go. Now the referee is going to go over to the sideline once again with 8.4 seconds on the clock and a 52-29 lead for Zumwalt East. They're going to have a discussion. Yeah, well, I don't know what kind of discussion they need with 8.4 seconds to go in a game. I know you want to be, you know, meticulous and perfect. However, this game is over, guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't need no conference here. I mean, just go ahead and run the clock. You know, the, the game is over. Now he's going to come over and talk to Craig Collins. Oh, the my goodness. Coach. Come on. Are you serious? Well, both coaches have made a concerted effort to not stop the clock here in the final right. six minutes exactly. of this game. So I don't know why they piss you. I mean, come on. Come on, big fella. Neither team has used a timeout in the second half. And now one more play. <laughs> and they'll spike it to stop the clock. Oh, my goodness. So there are 7.3 seconds left in the football game. I'm assuming they, they say never quit. I mean, I guess it's over. We can turn off the lights. You can lock the door. I mean, just leave. The door will be locked by someone else. This party is over, big fella. Lucas Jordan is back in there running back for Timberland. They're going to send two receivers to the left side. McDonald to the right. Mainbridge to McDonald, tipped and caught for the touchdown. Touchdown for McDonald. A 23-yarder, 13-yarder rather. And one more score for Timberland. That was good concentration by McDonald. I mean, the defensive back tipped the ball. He stayed with the ball and watched it in. That was very good. Very good concentration, outstanding concentration. Bainbridge with his fifth touchdown pass of the night. The extra point try is good. And it's 52 to 35. Now watch the concentration here. I mean, defensive back gets a nice break on the ball. Watch the break. Man, hits the ball. McDonald stays with it. Concentrate and catch a touchdown. I like the break on the ball. Got to knock it down. He knocked it up in there. McDonald stayed with it. The tip drill, and it paid off. 
Greg Collins has to feel pretty good about the way things went in the second half. Not about the first half in which they trailed 38 to 7. But now you look at what they've been able to accomplish here in the second half. Putting 29 points on the board. Yeah, I can deal with the second half, but I just can't deal with all that coaching right now with 1.3 seconds to go in this game. I mean, it's not much you can do. I mean, it's no miracle is going to give you those many points in this short period of time. It's just not going to happen. I mean, 16 points is not just, just going to happen in 1.3 seconds. Mm -hmm. Timberland is outscored. Zumwalt East 29 to 14 here in the second half. And to be honest about it, Zumwalt East did take their foot off the pedal a little bit in the second half. But at the same time, Bainbridge with the four touchdown passes in the second half, it's something for Timberland to hang their hat on as they try the onside kick. And uh, the clock never did start. And it was recovered by Timberland. Hey, but well, let me ask you, should the clock start it? Did they touch it? I believe so. Let's bring the official over and the referee. And we'll have another discussion with 1.3 no, seconds not with 1. left. 1.3 seconds. No, my, my friend, this is getting a little, getting a little carried away here. <laughs> I mean, one point. So if, if that's the case, the game should be over. If a Timberland player touched it before it go 10 yards, did they, did they run a clock at 1.3 seconds and it's over? Well, the clock should start when the kick, when the ball is kicked. I thought so. When the ball is kicked, that's when the clock runs, right? Maybe not here. Maybe not in high school. Until you touch Until it? Until they touch it. Okay. Because if there is a touchback, that's correct. If there's a touchback on the opening kickoff, there's still 15 minutes on the clock. Okay. Anyway, we'll have a kneel down here, and this game will end with a 52 to 36 victory for Zumwalt East. All right, now it's over. As Zumwalt East improves to 9 and 0, and we'll head to the playoffs with a 52 to 36 victory. Great night for Marvin Bird, who scored six touchdowns on the ground and ran for another. And Ryan Bainbridge, his counterpart, the quarterback for Timberland, with five touchdown passes, 52 to 36 in a shootout. Our play of the game, Marvin Bird with a 54-yard touchdown run. This was his fourth touchdown run of the game and the fifth that he had accounted for. And he was remarkable here. Man, you're right. I mean, the vision. Watch the stop, the balance. Look at the cut it. Woo! Look at that right there. Watch this accelerate. Woo! Then the acceleration, getting around the corner, taking that baby to the house. Bird just soaring high. Big fella for six points. And Marvin Bird delivers our Carpenters Union play of the game. After that touchdown, it was 35 to 7, 38 to 7 at halftime in favor of Zumwalt East, and they win it by a score of 52 to 36. There are the Class 5 District 4 champions, the Zumwalt East Lions leaving the field. So they win the district and they're on their way to the playoffs for the second year in a row. If you want to watch this game again and again and again, all you need to do is go to Channel 1, I Want More Sports, and then High School Sports. If you want to watch On Demand, all of our action is available on demand with Charter Communications. Our next game, it'll be Priory against John Burroughs. You can see it next Saturday after Big 12 football right here on CCIN. Check out our website, www.chartertv.com. All the information and game times for what's coming up here on CCIN is available at chartertv.com. This telecast has been an exclusive presentation of CCIN. Any rebroadcast or other internet use without the express written permission of Charter Communications is strictly prohibited. For Demetrius Johnson and our outstanding Charter Communications crew, I'm Randy Carricker. Thanks so much for joining us once again the final. Zumwalt East 52, Timberland 36. So long, everybody.
Fall is here, and so is the Real Estate Show's Fall Special. Pick the weekly advertisement that works for you and your seller's needs. A 15-second property advertisement for just $15. A 30-second property advertisement for $30. Or a 60-second property advertisement for $60. Cool, crisp prices are in the air. Take advantage of the special. Like fall, it's just for a limited time. Call 314-394-2527 or visit OnCharter.tv. Do you think you have what it takes? Televised Bowling is coming to St. Louis and auditions for commentators are taking place. How would you like to get paid to talk about bowling? The Nationwide Bowling Tour is holding auditions for two commentators from the St. Louis area, voicing for five televised tournaments made of multiple divisions. If you think you have the voice and passion for this, visit www.nationwidebowlingtour.com for more information and registration. Fall is here, and so is the Real Estate Show's Fall Special. Pick the weekly advertisement that works for you and your seller's needs. A 15-second property advertisement for just $15. A 30-second property advertisement for $30. Or a 60-second property advertisement for $60. Cool, crisp prices are in the air. Take advantage of the special. Like fall, it's just for a limited time. Call 314-394-2527 or visit OnCharter.tv. Do you think you have what it takes? Televised Bowling is coming to St. Louis and auditions for commentators are taking place. How would you like to get paid to talk about bowling? The Nationwide Bowling Tour is holding auditions for two...